<laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us once again on Lawful Stupid RPG's production of the Pantheon role-playing game. With me, your DM, Harry, ready to thrust you back into this world of ancient Greek myths and heroes. But first, some news from Lawful Stupid RPG. If you're interested in the channel, if you enjoy our content, make sure tomorrow at 7 o'clock EST to tune in for Hem Laura, one of our flagship campaigns. And then every Thursday at 2 p.m. EST, a bit early in the day, you can join Mark, one of our most talented dungeon masters, as he runs his Eroth campaign. And make sure, of course, always to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and join the Discord because we're always running one shots myself and a host of extremely great DMs, always running one-shots, playing games, just indulging in all that great nerd culture. And of course, remember, Patreon is the way that you can support us the most. So make sure to look at the Patreon. All the social links are below. But yeah, in the meantime, before we start today's session, please enjoy this recap courtesy of our very own Antigonus the Half-Orc. Last time, on Pantheon. Having barely escaped the evil enveloping Eritrea, the party travels with the Oracle and her guard, Aquilus, to the nearby town of Xenopolis. Welcoming the hospitality of the Temple of Athena, the party takes advantage of some much-needed rest. In the meantime, the Oracle prepares a ritual for those whom she deems her chosen heroes, only to find the temple lacking the consecrated incense required. Having learned an imposter priestess stole the incense under the orders of the local Spearhorn gang, the party searches the town for the base of their nefarious operations. Spearhorn turns out to be a short-tempered minotaur. After a perilous fight, the party manages to collapse the warehouse beneath his feet before dispatching him during his attempted swim to safety. The Oracle has the ritual prepared upon the hero's return. She places the incense, and the six chosen few are gifted a glimpse into several timelines in which fabled heroes change the course of history. This is the Oracle's final gift to the party. Her job done and her power depleting, she allows herself to pass from this world into the next, dying as the ritual completes. The world is now a blank canvas for our heroes. Only time will tell if the Oracle's vision comes to be. Well, welcome back, everybody. And as the recap has shown you, we join our party at a very somber scene. The Oracle, having given her final gift to the party, lies limp in the arms of Aquilus, her sworn guard, who right now just looks at a total loss of what to do or what to say. Having given his entire life for one service and it having snatched away from him without even having him a chance to draw his sword in defense, he looks from one party member to the other, lets her down very gently, cushions her head with a nearby cushion, and says, I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> I don't know. I, and he just looks from one of you to the other, and he catches the words in his throat. What happened? What happened? Tell me. Lark is going to stay, stay pretty much quiet, uh, crouch down where she had previously been holding him and look to somebody else, hopefully, to speak. She, uh, uh, through it, you go. The Oracle gave her life to show us a vision of what could be and what is. She, 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 she would have told me if she was going to give her life. She would have told me. Would she? Those narrow his eyes at you. She told us to thank you for your service and loyalty. Aquilus' scarred veteran of her face, his grizzled, rugged, sort of half beard and scars on his eyes, they crease for a single moment, as though the very stony visage of a soldier is about to break for that one split second. You can see a single tear pour from his eye. We get up and hug him. He instantly turns his head. As you hug him, he just does not respond. He stands there statuesque, and it feels like you are hugging stone, cold and unforgiving. But he puts a hand eventually on your shoulder and pushes you back. You would have stopped her. That's probably why she didn't tell you. You're right. <laughs> Don't... 
I don't know what to do with myself. This defined me. Well, redefine yourself. She believed in all of you. That much is clear. You can still assert her in death. She chose us as heroes and it seems like we could use your help too. I... I would love to honor the Pythia's memory and her choice in judging you all as heroes. But before I devote myself to any cause, I will need time. Perhaps you could at least give us some more information. It was Adeus that called everyone to Eritrea and the Pythia seemed to think that it was an attempt at her life the attack. Is there any other information you have that might be of use to us? As you speak in Kara, Hesia backs up your words and says, she told me she wanted to give her life to stop any attacks happening on her like it did in Eritrea. But it will go onto Aquilus's muted ears to this as he just looks to you, Kara, and says, the she was very silent as we traveled to Eritrea. She's usually so full of joy. That's why I, why I liked her. But I know she believed in the Eritrean Accord, but she spoke less over the last few days, less than ever. I'm sorry, I, I know nothing what she offered. You know who this uh, Phoricities of Cyrus is? She claimed he was the killer. Phoricities? Yes. Well, I've heard the name before, but I I can't place it. And um, you can roll me a history check if you wish to, right? Yeah, I would like to. And anyone who, you know, wants yeah, to... Yeah, can I I'll I'll roll a history check? Yeah, sure. Which I'm specialised in. <laughs> Doesn't matter, mm. I rolled 11 total. Ah, uh, 11. 18. 18, yeah. Phrysides is quite a well-known name to the people of Greece. Um, around 150 years ago, uh, very uh, seven very powerful wizards got together. Uh, Phrysides was one of them. And they were known as the Seven Sages of Greece. And they would have been human? Uh, all human, yeah. So 150 years ago, he should be dead by now. Should be. Yeah. I'm going to type his name as it is in the Roll20 chat. She uh, answered my question to tell me that that was the killer of my friend. So this doesn't make sense. He is 150 years ago dead. What he was your question? The Pythia's answers never come clearly. She can't tell you who is responsible. Perhaps some decision made by this person years ago is what made him responsible. Think of it less of a question and more of a question of a question, or a rumor whispered between many friends. We saw the living dead attack a city. I, I believe at this point anything is possible. Possible that he was simply one of the bodies, but I suspect that is not the case. Not what I meant, but okay. Yes. Aquilus, um, how, how do we go about finding a new oracle? A new oracle will be elected from the priestesses at Delphi, at the Temple of Apollo. Does my, my question pass on to her, then? If you wish to seek them out, I'm sure they would see you, given your protection of the previous oracle. The answer's only with more questions. I would not advise it. It is useless for practical reasons. We need information. What we have is useless for soldiers. We need to scout. I want revenge. We need to go back to Eritrea. We'll go forward to Athens. And Why? To inform them of the current oracle's death, to inform them of the horde of undead possibly following us, to figure out what the hell that vision she just showed us means or is or was. 
Yes, I, I understand she's named us heroes, but we can't get too much of an ego boost. We can't take on that many living dead, was it? Um, I'm not suggesting that we take them on head on. I'm suggesting that we go scout, get more information. We can send a messenger to inform Athens. This is not a... This is not equal to our skills. I've seen you fight alongside me. I'm impressed. We need options. Going to Athens, I do not see this as a good idea. No offense, but I don't see skulking around in the tree line of a city that was just attacked as a great strategy either. Who is our enemy? Who is their leader? Will we find this by going to Athens? No. But we I have a better chance of stopping them in Athens. I Why? do agree that more information would be helpful in this situation. We have so little to go on. I think uh, enough information of having bodies hurled at a wall at some festival of heroes is enough to go on. I think that us skulking around watching it only puts us in danger when we can warn people. By the time we go and look how many lives will maybe have been lost or could lose because we didn't warn anybody. Well, we sent Lridius, was that his name, that fellow we ran into? We he went back, off. he's dead. <laughs> uh, yes, I, that's don't, true. I don't care uh, to make the same mistake he did. As you're talking, Aquilus has leaned down and has scooped the oracle up as though he's cradling a small child. She's pulled her hood down far enough to go down to her chin and turns around and while being attended by Hesia, who follows him closely behind, he'll just say, I will return the Oracle to Delphi. I don't suppose we'll be seeing one another very soon. Delphi? No. <laughs> In relation. Okay, it's, yeah. yeah, quite far from you. It's definitely, it's further than Athens. So. Yeah, but would he go by Athens? He would. Okay. Aquilus. Will you go to Athens first? I'll pass through. And would you be a messenger? I will. If you're asking me to spread the message of what I saw in Eritrea, I'll make sure it's on the lips of everyone in Greece from here to Delphi. Thank you. At least I can do. Messenger problem solved. Antigonus, I would like to hear your opinion. Antigonus slowly picks himself off the floor where he had dived after the spirit of the uh, the fate slammed the floor, wondering why he's been thrown into all this. Um, he looks up and sort of says, <clears throat> In my mind, I'd serve no gods. I serve only man. I will do what it takes to make sure every person is informed of the threat in memory of the Pythia. If that means making sure this message is sent, not sending Aquilus alone with the oracle in his arms across desert sands, across water, he needs some protection. I feel like that's the best course of action. I'm not sure what more we need to know than undead or piling in and being led by some mysterious figure with a maul. Sounds to me like enough information. I mean, so far it's uh, three against two. What say you, old man? He's been looking through his paperwork, well, like just bits and pieces, like maps and stuff. Um, for, for, for once, I'm a bit stumped, my child. She is going to, Galen's just going to kind of look over at Kara, just like three against two. Play against two is not an argument. Why should we go to Athens? You want to go back there, I'm pretty certain you will die. I'm no oracle, but that's just common sense. My question is, why Athens? What is in Athens? What? What's the next? I mean, if Aquilos is going to spread the news anyway, what's our purpose for heading there? Aquilus cannot necessarily survive the trip on his own, especially cradling a body of the Oracle. That's my worry. It I is. trust that he'll send the message. I don't trust that he'll make it by himself. Don't Agreed. worry about me. The Oracle alone is enough passage I need. 
Once it seeing seen... her body, no one will interrupt this most holy of quests. I've seen stronger men fall for smaller reasons. If mm. combat breaks out, I am guarantee you'll protect her body over yourself, which is understandable, but we'll never get to spread the message. He has the... He can take the cart. He doesn't have to just carry her. I think we're thinking too small. It doesn't matter if it's Athens, or if he takes a cart, or if he walks, or if we accompany him, or if the message gets through him, or through us, or otherwise. I think we need to figure out where we want to go and to what end. Precisely why I said we needed more information. I agree. The fact that we might die is not an argument for me. I'm a soldier. I'm used to that. There is no benefit without the risks. So you want to go backwards towards the undead army? I do not want to attack them, but we need information. It is useless, well, practically useless to inform Athens that is in an, uh, there is an army without knowing numbers, without knowing who is leading, without knowing where they are going or what they want. But do you realize that you as a soldier are asking me, a dancer, and my sister to go to somewhere that seems like certain death. I will not have her go. But you are not simply a dancer, are you? I saw you yesterday with the Minotaur. You were capable. You did not get to Greece from Egypt without some skills. And I'm not asking you to attack. Larkin is not going back there. Yeah, we, we know how to be stealthy. We know how to be smart. If going forward doesn't seem to be serve any purpose, then maybe they're right. Maybe we do need to know more what we're going to be spreading. What message can we share if we know just that bodies were hurled at the city? That's not helping anyone. Larkin, I agreed to go to a hero festival with you to get some money. This is not what I agreed to. I agree. From what the article showed us, she meant something. I'll take on this destiny or fate of a hero but that doesn't mean I have to be stupid but and not- she'll kind of sulk off a little bit, she's still listening and in short but just kind of sulking <laughs> I leave come morning for Athens and Delphi there is another option we can per Antigonus's request we can the oracle could remain here for a day and a half two days maybe while we scout briefly and we will not remain out there for long afterwards regardless of the information we obtain we will come back and accompany aquilis to athens that is another option i appreciate your candor and your practicality i like that decision so we we scout tonight. We scout. To, what are you suggesting, Prewit? Tonight or on the morrow. I would prefer to leave in the morning so that we would arrive uh, closer to night when we arrive near the enemy, assuming they have not traveled closer to us. Aquilus, would that be agreeable to you? Day for a day, but news needs to reach Delphi as soon as possible. All right, so um, Hesiel have left the room by this point, the priestess, and Aquilus will follow soon behind to find the um, oracle somewhere to, for lack of a better word, rest. And I saw on dead, oh, stop a dead state there. But um, yeah, as it's night, it'll be a few hours till morning comes. You can either set off to Eritrea now or the opposite direction, your choice, um, or you can wait till morning. Sorry. Um, we wish to leave now or wait till morning. How, how Personally, I'm a bit. I'm a I bit do. digged up from the battle myself. I could use a little bit of rest. Let I agree. I'm, I'm not sure I want to stay here another night. <laughs> oh well, as your uh, sister, uh, you are relations, I assume, would say. It is for the two. 
<laughs> well, if we have to stay, we can, but the sooner the better, I guess, if that's what we're doing. And let us keep watch outside the temple in case they approach. We can take shifts. I'll take the first one. I will take the second. Get some rest. Tomorrow we'll ride toward Eritrea, see what we can see, immediately come back and begin the journey towards Athens. I only need a few hours rest. I'd be happy to stand watch as well. Great. I don't think I, I can sleep. sleep. The, um, the room is still set out for you, pillows and all, with a very warm and sort of now uh, almost but dimming glow and all the braziers that surround the room. But the silks and the pillows and the rugs that have been laid out are all still there, same as you left them during your first rest. But if you wish to rest, I'll just need a resting order from you. I'm, um, before I go to sleep, um, Yelling will go over to Herodotus. Mm-hmm. Old man, you are, I don't mean to insult you, but you, you understand what the plan is, right? Oh, yes, my dear, yes. You think you'll be okay? I mean, you could always, if we're going to come back, you could always stay here and uh, take care of Larkin, maybe. Make sure that he stays safe. Oh, it's okay. I've still got legs in me yet. I'm not staying here. Larkin. You're not leaving me behind. We've talked about this. From from like her position across the room, like trying to sleep but not sleeping. Forget I asked. Okay. <laughs> All right. You probably so can do that. <laughs> who's gonna sleep first? <laughs> I mean, I'm on first watch, so I'm I'm not sleeping. All oh, right, yeah, sure. So Zach's got watch for two hours. Oh, sorry, Antigonus got watch for two hours. Then Pruitt's got watch for two hours, and then Kara has the last four hours of watch, seeing as she only needs four hours of sleep. All right, sure. So Kara's sleeping straight away. Yeah. All right. And you guys want to engage with the long rest? Yeah. Okay. Interesting, Kara. So as you um lay your head back to get the night's sleep, you'll find that your eyes shut quicker than usual, as though a great weight is placed upon them and you just can't seem to open them once you've closed them. And even if you're sending messages down to lift your arms or your legs, you'll find that you feel like you're stuck to the ground in this temple. It's only after a great deal of struggle where to anyone else, it would just seem like you're sound asleep that you do manage to finally open your eyes, which you aren't in the temple anymore. You're in a strange place that looks nothing like the temple. Where there once was stone columns and braziers scattered around in silks and pillows. What's set up with you now, or around you, I should say, is a vast wilderness of green and brown colours. Purple flowers, strange coloured mushrooms scattering on the trees, fungi all surrounding the bark with certain pillars with strange things carved into them. It seems like you've awoken on for lack of a better description, a bed of petals that seems to have been laid out for you. But there is a certain path carved through the trees as though it's beckoning you forward. And indeed you do feel a certain allure as it weaves its way around what all these trees seem to form like a wall of wood either side of you. But the soft cushy grass has made a perfect path all spread aside as though beckoning you on. Do I have my staff? Yeah, I'd say your staff's sort of placed next to you. I'll uh, pick it up and go ahead and slam it down and attempt to cast Shillelagh. Sure thing. Um, and as that happens, the blooming of the staff on the end does signify the fact that your Shillelagh has been cast. Okay, so feeling a little bit of comfort with that, I'm gonna slowly proceed down the path. All right. You're welcomed here. There's a sweet sense of pine and spruce in the air, something sweet on the air, pollen perhaps, or some unknown vegetable or fruit that's blooming in the forests. 
You can hear the sort of pleasant chittering of squirrels as they talk to one another and birds that chase around each other, flirting with one another in the treetops. But as you walk on and on, you'll see the same um, wooden pillars that have got something carved into them. But um, the signs you don't recognize. It's not long, though, before the trees open up to a, quite a large opening, a clearing, where roots all lead towards a single, what well, seems to be an extremely blue, pearlescent spring of water, which immediately from the side of it, you can understand, seems to feed the forest from all around. But the most dominating of things that catches your eye is the shape that hunches over this, this spring, a huge back, and you can see the muscles and the bones poking through his shoulder blades as he shakes himself off and raises his head. It seems you've caught him in the midst of offering a small amount of seeds to a squirrel, which he holds in his right-hand palm. But as he straightens himself up, you'll see him to be about 10 to 11 feet tall. And with a huge amount of um, sort of weight to his body, which he carries very gracefully as he turns around, to a very stern face, these huge antlers come out of his forehead in vast display, almost six feet wide, as though they are a crown atop his head. And he just smiles at you and beckons you closer to the spring. I'll kind of bow my head and approach slowly. As you get closer, he'll turn back to the spring now. And with the same seeds, he begins leaning down and turning them into something else before throwing them in a sort of sort of um, spraying pattern onto the surface of the water. And you don't see only fish come up, but frogs, small insects begin to nibble at the things. And he just has a warm smile on an otherwise very stoic face before he turns to you and says, will you walk with me? Yes. Come. And he'll stand straight again. And as he walks towards the opposite side of the forest that you came from, the trees themselves will uproot slightly and move aside. And the grass itself will part as though blown by some breeze, but not a breeze you've ever seen before. One that seems to make perfect sense, knowing why he'll walk. I am the forest. I am the scent of blossoms on the spring breeze. I am the crushing roar of the river's rapid against ancient stone. But I find myself asking you for help. Kara, do you know who I am? I do. Very well. And as he walks along, he says very little. And you'd think with antlers this wide that he must catch them on some anything in the forest, the vines that hang down or branches that scatter or anything. But instead, what seems to happen is birds come along and pleasantly perch on them as the trees move aside for him wherever he moves. It's as though if he started sprinting, he would never hit anything. But everything's so ready to move for him. It's a strange side, a peculiar one, not something you can really ascribe to any sort of physical thought. But it seems like the forest moves around him as though obeying his command. But it's not long before the forest changes shape and you approach a darker place, full of scattered roots and no discernible beauty as the forest you came from. Here is a land of marshes and bogs, of sodden mud which your feet sink into with every step. You can feel it seeping through your boots. You can smell the rot in the air as the trees turn from pleasant, sort of sentient, wise beings to gnarled, gripping creatures that seem to try and grab you at every turn only for you to turn around and see that they were just trees all along with spindly, small, thin branches. It's the gloom. And I'm stranded here, here in my domain. It shrinks every day. It gets closer to the spring. And he'll point to a certain tree, which is halfway through the process. You can see down to an inch where this tree is on one side rotten and sprouting horrible growths of unusual fungi, seeping pus, and on the other side is healthy in all its greenery, showing signs of healthy lichen and moss. The, I can't save them. The gloom, you call it? It has no name. I know not from where it comes. How Nothing do we of our world. That's where I ask your help, Kara. My subjects have lost faith 
and in their arrogance they serve the gloom. I've seen this. That's why I left. You've seen this, but I would ask you see one more thing, Kara. A vision I would rather not share with you, but I want you to understand the gravity of this situation. What stands to be lost in this mortal world of yours? Look now to the horizon and see what the gloom becomes. And as though by his command, although you seem to be some sort of orchestrated dramatic scene that he knows is going to happen, a certain mountain, a hillock on the horizon, I should say, where the trees sort of grow on this moving shamble begins to rise and shake the same way he did when he rose from the um, spring. But it gives a shuddering shake and the trees fall from it and it stands and are silhouetted against the dusk on the horizon. You see a huge black figure with a gaping maw, a mouth that stretches from the upper lip from what you can only assume in the very tenuous sense to be some kind of nose down over its torso and finishing his mouth just above the navel. I know not what it is, and I know much in this world, Kara. I've never seen anything like this before. And it'll turn to look as though meeting your gaze over what must be dozens and dozens of miles. It sort of dwarfs the treetops as it begins to move closer and you can hear the snapping of trees, but you must be miles away. How can you possibly hear it? But you do, and you hear its thunderous footsteps as it pushes aside ancient growths of vegetation to make its way closer. But finally, Cernos will look to you and he'll look deep into your eyes and his eyes seem to go black. And he says, this is what you fight against, Kara. This is why I am trapped. Carry on your path. It's for this that you've come to my attention, but we don't have long. And as he's talking, you can hear the footsteps getting closer and closer. You can start to see the trees closer to you through the others. The trunks are beginning to snap as the trees just begin to buckle under this thing's colossal weight, as though every step it makes is not, is not hindered at all by these trunks. They just snap, rotten. They squelch. They're so more pus than bark by this point until he reaches the very edge of this now sacred grove. But just before this huge thing, you must imagine the size of a mountain, several hundred feet high, begins to step down. Its foot squashes you down, but you wake in the temple, surrounded again by the dim lights of the Athenian temple. Looking around... Does anyone notice that I just kind of abruptly, frightfully awoke? I'm not sure if anyone else is awake. That's their decision. Yeah, Larkin definitely wasn't sleeping anything consistent. Um, to remind them, I'm like the vision and what had been going on a lot recently. So, still laying there as she had been earlier, your your jolting awake would you'll definitely see two curious eyes sort of looking at you. I bad dream. Yeah, yeah, something like that. You want to talk about it, or just roll a sort of gesture if you don't want, if you want to roll back over? Uh, I don't know if there's much to be said other than we definitely need to pursue this, figure out what is happening. There's evil in this world right now. <laughs> I think we're having a lot of revelations about that recently. Oh, who's on watch? At um, this point, Preywick comes in. He's just finished his, the second watch. And, uh, right, well, Preywick. Yeah. I have something to say to you then. I didn't realize you were on watch <laughs> in, like, in conjunction with this, for sure. As you're watching, it's not too difficult to see as it's still dark for you, but a lit sort of uh, a cart drawn by two donkeys passes through Xenopolis from the direction of Eritrea. Okay. Um, I I'm, assume I'm right outside the temple, right? This temple's quite close to the main road, and the main road is the only kept up feature in this town except the temple itself. So, yeah, you'd see it, and it wouldn't be too far away from you. Yeah, I'm gonna start approaching, but not go too far outside the city. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I definitely want to... Uh, be the one to receive this cart. Sure thing. Yep. Um, and I'm not hiding. Sure thing. 
um, as you make your way down and you manage to stand in front of the car, it gets sort of alarmingly close to you before it stops, drawing itself to a close as though the person drawing it, or the reins, was trying to, in fact, possibly scare you. But um, he does make it to you and it does slow down. But uh, you're greeted with the sight of a young boy, one you've seen before. Aridius, who you sent to Eritrea, is the one drawing the cart. As he looks down from atop it at you, he says, huh, you weren't half kidding. There's, there's no one left in Eritrea. What, what happened? I mean, you made it out and with a cart. Well, yeah, I mean, not hard. And looking from the cart behind it, it is stacked to the brim with weapons, armor, all sorts of things, some gold vases and jewelry, um, whatever looks of value. He says, and the city yeah. Was, the city was empty? I, I'm telling you, there was nobody there. And I'm talking nobody. I was looking for hours, man. I was looking in every cupboard. I was looking on the rooftops. I didn't even see a corpse. Yes, you looked in every nook and cranny, I'm sure. But uh, where did they go? There was an army. Was Suddenly, I saw a smashed door. I saw a gates were blown wide open by something. I saw blood. I saw I saw a severed hand at one point, but I didn't see any corpse. the hand, did you see bodies? Uh, no, and I was looking. You got to trust me on that one. Okay, insight. Just in All right, sure. <laughs> That's nine plus something. I believe it's plus two. Yeah, plus two. So 11 on insight. Hard to get a good read on him. Okay. Really. Okay. I'm telling you, nobody, nobody left. Nobody. Hmm. How do you think I got by all this, huh? I'm going to make a shiny amount of drag me on this one. Well, congratulations. At least someone is happy. Hey, I get it's a tragedy, this attack that you, you said happened, but... I don't know, man. I'm, I don't get it. There's nobody there. Are you sure you guys just didn't have a bit too much fun? You know, a lot of heroes yeah, in one so place. Everybody else in Eritrea, they were partying for days. They left their houses and their valuables behind. Hmm. Guess it doesn't make much sense. That's true. Did you see a direction where they might have gone? I ain't in the business of tracking armies. I try to remember. I I saw catapults on the mountain behind Eritrea. Yes. But when I went up to look, there was nobody there. But the catapults, how many? Were there many? I didn't count them, man. There was a lot of them. Was there signs of a large uh, troop of people leaving in a certain direction? The grass, was it uh, crushed? What on do side? I look like to you? Some kind of, I don't know, hunter survivalist? I don't know. You are not a scout. I know that, but... There I saw a lot of footprints on a road, but I see a lot of footprints yes, on all roads. This road? Well, yeah, but, you know, I imagine a lot of people came to Eritrea before this happened, so they could have been them. I don't know. Hmm. Well, good luck selling your loot. Don't you worry. I'm going to have a good fun with this. And he'll give the uh, donkeys a very telling and sharp snap with the reins and whether or not you move the thing just lurches forward at an alarming pace okay and i'll let him pass hey I'll, I'll catch you later sometime we can help each other out again i definitely appreciate the tip this time as he makes his way down the road where where will you be staying i don't know and i don't really have a home but bye thank you i'm, I'm going now <laughs> yeah asking someone where they're staying is like, it's like yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. the local <laughs> hotel yeah <laughs> staying at the four seasons man <laughs> <laughs> of course <laughs> but okay yeah that's sort of um it's not long before that dim light on his cart just fades around a corner of a um nearby hill around the coastline that the road follows all the way to chalkis mm-hmm yeah, um, Pray will finish his watch and head back in. To back up just a second, so when Antigonus had his watch, um, <laughs> while he was watching out, he was working on a clay sculpture, and that little sculpture is of a of a minotaur, 
And in particular, the Minotaur has a kilt, and the kilt is he's sort of lifting it slowly um, <laughs> forward. And so once it's finished and I finish my watch, as I go back to bed, I put the little figurine next to the sleeping Larkin and then give it back. <laughs> God damn it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I will treasure it forever. Yeah. Just want to confirm everyone can hear music or no one can hear music or... I was hearing music, but not at this second. Yeah, no, I'm stopped. hearing a little bit. It stopped? Actually. I hear birds. That's about it. Yeah, I'll have gone exactly. Noise. Noise. So, yeah, I'm okay. just making sure. So, I can put on some music if you like. Um, That's all. I'll refresh. Yeah, sure. But, okay, carrying on. Um, so, on Prewitz, the... on, on his way back in, Kara and I are having a quick dialogue, and that's where we're currently. Yeah. Okay. Kara, it's your watch now, so... Well, yeah, yeah Prewit so... walks into a, an already awake Kara. Right, so I would stop and speak yeah. to him. How is your watch? Do you see anything? Yes, and it complicates things. You remember that boy that was on the road? Redius, I yes. believe it was called. It was. Well, he's back. And he's pillaged the town, which is empty. Eritrea has been abandoned, and the catapults have been left, and there are no bodies. No bodies at all? Yes, it's more complicated than I thought. I oh. mean, we're still going back there. I, I don't know yet. Yeah. Go to sleep. <laughs> no, I'm trying to. Just... What's going on? Would be anything left? To discover tracks or I would like to look at the city to see what direction they went yes are you all right you are not sleeping and it is not unusual for someone not to sleep before a battle I I don't need much sleep really my people just don't sleep a lot and had a bit of a dream but I'm fine it was more than a dream. She woke up pretty scared, not gonna lie. Yes, this is not unusual. All right, so whose watch is next? That would be me. Paris. All right, Kara. Yes, yeah, so you're up for four hours, right? What on watch? Yes. All right, you'll see priestesses check in with you every now and then. Um, they bring in fresh food, fresh bread and fruit and wine and place it basically at the entrance to the chamber, but they don't intrude any further. But beyond that, you're only left with the um, solitude of and the haunting of your previous dreams. At some point, Kara, during your watch, Larkin will have gotten up like, and sat next to you wherever you've sort of perched yourself. I can't sleep. that happened to you a lot? I mean, no, not really. Only when I've just seen some the weird visions. I have not, not even the, the bodies. Is it that, that blonde woman's face and her, and her scissors? Just... Yes, that was quite disturbing. I'm not sure if either of you had a religion check on that last time, but you can roll on if you want to try and piece things together as you sure. put your heads together and talk about it. Gladly. Ooh, that is not good. <laughs> a little groggy, that's a nine. A nine? Mm-hmm. See 16. what car it's got. Sixteen. Um you recall some tale that um of um these things called the Moirai in the Greek Greek mythology. The very um quite well known to commoners because it directly affects them more than anything else. But it's said that once you die, your hair is snipped by a pair of shears held by one of these creatures. But who they are and what their significance is, you're not quite sure. Have you ever seen anything like that before? Wherever you're from? No, I've never seen anything like that. I've heard of it, though. I, I think they're called... Something like Morai. Um, I don't know much, only that it has to do with when you die, you, your hair is cut, strand. I guess it's like 
cutting your connection to life. I, I don't know. That's really all I recall. I don't know, but she was eerie. It was like staring into my soul or something. Ugh. Yes, definitely unsettling. Every time I close my eyes, I see hers. Mm. <sighs> well, did, death did comes I... to all eventually. Yeah, you should talk to Antigonus. You two seem like you'd get along in that department. Um, did our soldier boy have anything helpful to say from his watch? Um, that boy, Ridius, the one we met on the road, who went to Eritrea. The one with the fast feet? Yes, the one your sister said is dead. Well, he's not. He apparently went back to Eritrea and all the bodies are gone. The army's gone. There's right. nothing there. I, I, I have heard that, sorry. Um, that's a lot of bodies gone. Yes. Thing. That's unsettling as well. I don't like any of this. Neither do I. Simpler before this, except at the same time. This is also fascinating. I, I'm very, very conflicted about it. I don't know that fascinating is the word I would use. What word would you use? I don't know. Terrifying? Dark and stormy? Indeed. Well, I don't know. There's got to be some light there somewhere. Is there... there always is. Without light, there is no darkness. Without darkness, there's no light. That's how yes. it works. Definitely talk to the half orc. I'm going to try to go back to bed now. Mm -hmm. Just sort of go back over and see this little statue of a like questionably posed minotaur and be like, I'm sure I recognize the the material. And yeah, so it's, sure. <laughs> it go it goes into the into the the box after a chuckle. <laughs> but all right, um, tries to go back to sleep. Sure. Over the course of your watch, there, Kara, you'll see that the the dawn on the Aegean Sea begin to rise, and give a pleasant, very pale blue sunrise. Um, but it's not long before everyone's finished their long rest, and there is a new day dawning on. Um, Xenopolis and the Temple of Athena. Right, should I prepare the horses? Well, yes, let's. Pray, what, do you want to share your news from last night? Yes. Uh, do you all remember the boy that we met on the way here? The dead one. To become a hero. Right, yes, the little snot, I remember. Yes, yes, him. Well, he has come back from Eritrea with a cart and with uh, a lot of valuables that he pillaged from an empty city, devoid of bodies and men. The catapults were still there and he neglected to get any other useful information. So we will need to do an investigation. Well, now there's really no point in going. It's kind of what I was thinking. It, what else there's we... not even any loot there anymore. Oh, is that the reason you are going? I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was trying to find the benefit of going. Well, I'm sure he did not manage to pillage the whole city, if that is the issue. What are you hoping to find, Greywit, when we get there? If we get there? Well, you can't move an army that big without leaving a trace. I hope to find the direction they went. I also didn't think someone could die in front of me and, and age rapidly. Um, but <laughs> been, been wrong, so perhaps you can. You are right, it is pointless. We cannot do anything, we will simply shrivel and die. Pruitt, now, it, yeah, now you're talking, Pruitt. That's my that's my boy. Is there a reason you don't want to go to Athens? You seem so against it, I don't understand. Not useful, it is. I'm, it is not that I have anything against Athens. I, I'm sorry if I've been so angry, but no, there is no use in going there if we do not have any information or any leads. Uh, the, 
what what if we get an army from Athens? What if the best case scenario they send back troops? What then? Where would they go? To be fair, I think we've had this conversation. I think we should just get moseying on. If we sit here talking in circles, we're going to waste more time than we would just going. Let's check it out. Let's see what's there. If we find up nothing, we lose 24 hours. That's all. all I'm right. sorry. Horse is ready. Sure. And yeah, uh, outside, you'll have the same cart and two donkeys, but you don't have any horses, unfortunately. Oh, right, right, right. Well, <laughs> I named the donkey horse, so. Okay. <laughs> it's one way to get around it. <laughs> Larkin, That's when we're in the city, you're with me. Oh, never mind. Okay. Always oh, am. Gathering your stuff. Yeah, it's a long and sort of very lonely ride back to Eritrea, which you'll be quite accustomed with now, having made the trip twice, most likely, um, both to and from, because you traveled there for the Heroes Festival in the first place. Um, but yeah, there is no one else on the roads on the way or coming from. Um, but eventually you pass around a certain bend on the coastal road and you do in fact see the city of Eritrea with its gates open now, but um, about a soul in sight. This is creepy. Even I don't know a magic trick like this. Mm. Uh, old man, can you send your, your weird bird? What's so weird about him? His head does a thing. It's a little... Oh, it's just, they all do that. Uh, they're owls. Have you not seen an owl before? Um, I don't think they're very common where I grew up. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, okay. So you, you can't really speak to most of them, I don't think, but... Oh, oh. To be fair, you have a you have a box that makes minotaurs take off their clothes. I think that at this point it's par for the course. Larkin, you remember that one meal that we had and it was some sort of bird and it tasted really nice? I oh, think yeah. I think that was owl. <laughs> if that helps you at all. Oh, don't say that in front of Panamedes. Uh, it helps sort of. If we ever get hungry, at least we have a worst case scenario. <laughs> I don't know where he is. Where are you, Palamedes? He will answer you eventually, but he seems to be perched on a gnarled dead tree that's on the side of the road. Still looking for a red-headed minotaur. <laughs> <laughs> kind of damn. But he'll say, what, what? I'm over here. Hurry up, hurry up. I'm looking around for where he is. He's on a gnarled tree that's on the side of the road ahead of you. Oh, look, there he is. I say, come here. All right. And it flutters over at uh, sort of a very lazy pace, just barely keeping itself aloft. Seems like it shouldn't be able to do that, but who knows how Palamedes approaches the force of physics. Someone one day is going to draw art of Palamedes. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be uh, the cutest thing. If we, um, on, on our way there, if we pass any, I know it's random, uh, if we pass any snakes or anything, um, just let me know. So make a perception check. Okay. Oh, yeah, I forgot we could do that. <laughs> um, so that is a 12 perception. It's a 14. Mm, I'll let you know if you see any. All right, thank you. <laughs> if you see any. If I, if I clock on. <laughs> yeah, sure. All right, so Eritrea's gate's thrown open. The splintered wood of the gate seems like it was forced open by some kind of heavy, heavy objects, but it's as though it was forced inwards towards the city. You see the splintered wood um, scattered around the gate, but not only that, but also broken barrels that seem to be lining the walls and put on the ground. I would too. suggest that we uh, split up when inside the city. Usually, uh, usually it is not a smart idea, but uh, seeing as there was one uh, here already and confirmed the city was empty, I suggest we split up, look for a direction where this army went, and... Uh, if anything should happen, if you are spotted by anyone, give a shout and run back to the gate and we will meet you there. All right. I'm going to head toward the docks. That's the way that I entered the city anyway. I'll check that out. Uh, can uh, the Palamedes, can you um, just keep an eye out and tell me if there's anything that moves? Yes, uh, yes, yes. And he'll uh, take off upwards into the sky. 
Not no. can you want to take the main center? We had a bunch of time scouting that area out and messing around there. It might be good that we know the ins and outs of how to get around it. Maybe next, but I was kind of curious about um, the, the, the barn where we came up from underground. If, Not a bad idea. Uh, just if, if they found it after we did it, if it's been tossed, I, I don't know, but... Tell me if find a half-orc body there. Of course. Um, and I think uh, we'll start heading, at least the, at least the two of us, um, towards uh, where we sort of came up, Harry, when we were escaping. Yeah. Sure. Also, while we're investigating, if I see anything shiny or loot-wise... Yep, yeah, sure. But you can almost, by the absence of loot, you can almost track Eridius's path to the to the actual footstep. You'll see <laughs> like um, like a, a strange sort of absence of anything of useful in certain houses, and you can pretty safely assume that this is the path he took. But yeah, um, I'll say maybe an investigation check as you go along. So you look through the houses, and if you're looking quite closely and stuff. I rolled a one, so. <laughs> That's a dirty 20. All right. Well, with a one, uh, yeah, I mean, you go into, uh, Larkin, sorry. <clears throat> you go into a uh, house and you've, um, you're pretty sure you see a really valuable um, sort of golden statuette of some sort of llama. If you've ever seen a llama before, I'm not sure. It looks like some sort of long necked horse, uh, but with a strange sort of gait about it that you don't quite recognize. Well, um, yeah. So you find that with a one. But with a 20, um, <laughs> you indeed, you find, um, we'll say, probably a pole arm that's been left by some um, hero who met an unfortunate fate that you can pretty much tell by the fact that it's uh, been dropped in the street and it's got a splash of blood over the shaft of it. But yeah, go, you can go ahead and have a martial spear. A martial is, spear. Mm -hmm. Is there any um, sign of like leftover undead? Um, or just, just remnants of, of moving corpses? Or any anything reminiscent of that? Um, you'll see body parts thrown around in some places that somehow got caught up in all the commotion. Uh, you do see a hand, like Adria said, somewhere, but um, right. Does it look, is it a fresh hand or like one of the undead esque hands? Is it grey or I'll make a medicine check? Uh, Fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah, it looks like one of the undead ones. It's uh, it seems to have been dead far longer than would have been for somebody who suffered their death at Eritrea. Mage hand sort of picks it up, mm -hmm. like dangle, dangles it near yelling. It's like, I think it's one of them. Oh, do you? Uh, I don't really know if it's wise for us to touch it. That's why I'm not touching it. In the box is. I'm not putting it in there. I mean, how long can you hold the thing for? I don't know. A while. I, I, I'm. It's up to you. Up to you. I'm just gonna like, carry this with me for a while, floating beside me as we sure. investigate. Oh, uh, right. what was it? Down, what was it that I got again? It was a uh, spear. spear, martial spear. Martial spear. <clears throat> but all right, uh, heading towards the docks and Tigonus, you'll see that the docks have seemed to have been like bear of anything not just bear of corpses but bear of any barrels or about any netting or anything that would usually be there there's no ships there's nothing but scattered and bobbing up and down in the ocean you'll see floating barrels that seem to be full of something or other um anything that might be of use seems to be scattered into the ocean do the uh barrels that are floating do they seem to be more uh, like the barrels that were shattered or do they seem different very difficult for you to tell i'd say you could try and roll me some kind of thing. Uh, probably intelligence. Okay. Yeah, let me do that. Wait, we lost somebody? Nope, just uh, five. Hmm. Oh, we, we yeah, have we lost. Yeah, lost that's how we lost Panda. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, we'll continue for now. And then when she gets back in. Um, what did you roll? Sorry there, Zach. Uh, just a five. A five. Yeah, you can't tell. They may be the same kind. They may just be ones that are native to Eritrea. And if there is any difference between them, who knows anyway? Okay. Um, yeah, I'll just uh, I'll keep looking around for a bit, and then I will head back to um, the center of town. Sure. It's a very eerie scene that you're all greeted with there in Eritrea. 
it's just the from time to time you think you hear the skittering of something but it might be just a rat that's running across um an open doorway but from signs of people you can see where things have been left half done and where tools or weapons have been abandoned but corpses that are full corpses you see none i'm going to spend 10 minutes harry to cast detect magic yep sure uh, after 10 minutes pass by you'll don't get really a sense of anything nearby. That's but I was going to nothing continue walking around with it. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Nothing's really blipping your radar though as you make your way around. Mm -hmm. uh, Pruitt will head towards the cap uh, the catapults. Okay. So making your way out of the city and up the hills on the outside, you'll finally come across um, the abandoned catapults and several empty barrels that are strewn alongside each of them. But um, all of them are in the upright position as though they've just fired. But uh, you don't see anyone around. And does it seem like, um, I guess, by the number of catapults, does it seem like the army would have taken any with them or that they left them all here? Um, from what you can tell from the tracks that have been put in the ground, then none of them were turned around and taken back. Okay. And what uh, make of catapult are they? Are they That's Roman? Interesting question. Um, I'd say roll me a history check. It's the best, probably a depth thing for that. 18. 18. Uh, they seem to be Greek. Greek catapults. Okay. Uh -huh. How many? Uh, about 12 of them. And would I? could I have a good guess about what size of an army? I mean, I saw an mm -hmm. army in Eritrea, but what size of an army would usually merit 12 catapults? Um, a large one. Like, right. objectively large. Compared to a legion? Hmm... Probably roughly the size of one and a half to two legions okay. of an army. Great. <laughs> mm -hmm. Level <Like> soldier. <laughs> so it's we'll like about 20 men then, yeah? So we'll be all right. It's like a, a After which, thousand. I'm going to try and figure out by what direction the army might have left the city. Sure. Um, roll me a survival check as you wander around trying to figure this out. Low DC, I think. Ooh, there we go. 19. 19, yeah. It's strange. Like, no... Neither north nor south, you don't really see the tracks of what would warrant, you know, a huge army. So it doesn't seem like they left either north or south. Does it seem like they might have left by sea? Um, maybe. I mean, judging with like a bit of meta knowledge from what Zach's been seeing with things strewn about in the ocean and the absence of any ships, then. Okay, so I, I know say... that they didn't. That they probably didn't leave by land. Yeah, but. Zach knows but... If you put your heads together, not yet, but you know, you'd, you'd be able to suss that they probably left by sea. Yeah, and then sorry, last thing, um, uh, Pr Pruitt won't go out of his way to do this, but he will pick up any spare valuables nearby, coin or whatnot. All right, make me an investigation check as you're wandering around. Nat twenty with a bonus of plus eight. <laughs> All right, wow, You've got an eight on investigation. You find a gold castle. Mm -hmm. I have expertise in investigation and very high intelligence. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Um, oh, so we're going to get along. Uh, <laughs> as you're going along, you'll see, um, you'll say, uh, out poking out of one of the doors, that, like that's a very thin door that obviously tried to brace against any kind of oncoming threat. But from the inside of the door, you see a sword's been put through it. And instantly, as a soldier, you notice that the sword is of an exceptionally good design. Yeah, I'll grab it. Yeah, so releasing it from inside the door, which is skewered, you pull it out, and it feels heavy in your hand, but exceptionally well-balanced. This seems to be some kind of gladius. Oh, it is. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Does it fit in my sheath? Like, um, <laughs> It seems like more like a um, more like a Spartan one, sort of like a, a scythe on one side, but a very thin scythe, you know, um, not like a full curve, but rather like a more machete style. Cool. Yeah, I'll keep that, but no money. No, just. Mm, I think I've been very generous with what I've given you. That's you you just found a plus, <laughs> a plus five Vorpal sword. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, I, oh, the Vorpal sword. Oh, why? Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah. Sword. Here we go. But do we get any gold? <laughs> yeah, and two gold. All right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh -huh. yeah, I'm really satisfied. I just thought it'd be funny just the image of uh, Pruitt coming back to the party with just money spilling out of his pocket. <laughs> I think yeah. you went on about not looting. <laughs> nah. No, I didn't. I didn't say not to loot. That's true. That's true. I just, I just poked at him for looting. Uh -huh, anyway, uh -huh. but yeah, no, that, that'll be it. <laughs> All right. As you're making your way back through town and you get closer to um, 
Herodotus. Herodotus. I'll be searching for live with people that may be alive. But we've got a tech magic still. If it does ping up finally as Pruitt starts walking by you, <clears throat> focused on a sword that he has in his possession. Oh, what did you find? It's magical. <laughs> I did not know that it was magical. It is a Spartan Gladys. Can I no, determine it, but... what sort of magic it is, Harry? Have you got Identify? I have. Oh, no, sorry. With Detect Magic, you can tell that anyway, but yeah. Some kind of enchantment. Oh, it's very it's very pretty. I, I can have a look for you later, if you like. Uh, yes, I would not mind. Uh, I'll leave it with you for now. I'll give him the Gladys. Sure. I like, hold it with two hands and like, almost drop it. <laughs> or would you like me to hold it for now and then later you can look at it? Or... Oh, yeah, yes, you take it. Okay, <laughs> take it back. <laughs> it's a bit heavy for me. Yes, I can see that. Uh, be careful. <laughs> All right, so, uh, Kara, what are you doing as you're in the city? Um, meanwhile, I am walking around the city looking for any animals stray animals that might be wandering random cats or anything like that yeah sure and make me a perception check perception. 15 15 all right um yeah you'll see a cat on top of a roof a rat will scurry by um they're all quite welcome to you though they don't seem to run away from you in fact some of them seem curious enough to follow you for some time um, how far away is the cat? Uh, it's on a roof, so it's going to be like about 16 feet above you. Um, okay. I'm going to look up toward the cat. Mm -hmm. And uh, is it looking at me? Like, do I have its attention? Yeah, yeah. And you'll see this big sort of yellow and black eyes sort of beam down at you. Okay. Curious as to your presence. I'm going to just kind of quietly mutter under my breath and make like a little scritchy kind of motion with my hand uh -huh. and there'll be like some green and gold sort of sparkles that'll <laughs> appear and they'll kind of surround the little cat and i'm uh -huh. gonna cast speak with animals all right sure i just picture you going yeah <laughs> like, like the magical version that's magic right? <laughs> yeah. the cat just looks at you and just walks away <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah um as far as you know you can speak with animals yeah yeah. So, um, but it's still just looking down at you. I'm sure about your, you know, your presence and stuff. Okay. Hello. Hi. And um, now, remind me, can they speak back to you with this? I don't know if they can. Um, it says I can comprehend and verbally communicate with beasts for the duration. Yeah. Okay. So they it can't speak back, unfortunately. Okay, but I can understand it yeah sure well i mean you can communicate i think simple ideas with it is that the spell like uh, if, if can you link says, the spell in roll 20 or yeah i mean it's the easiest way for me to do it unless you just want to read it yeah, I, I can link it if that's easier actually no i don't have a character sheet set up all right in no problem i'll read it you gain the ability to comprehend and verbally communicate with beasts for the duration the knowledge and awareness of many beasts is limited by their intelligence but at a minimum uh, beasts can give you information about nearby locations and monsters, right? So they can speak back to you. There you go. Okay. Yeah. It says verbally communicate. Yeah, yeah, verbally communicate, and I can comprehend and anything that they have perceived within the past day. Sure. Okay. They can right. Remember. Absolutely. So um, it will look down on you, but unless you engage in conversation with it, I mean, I think you said something there, did you? Yeah. I was like, hello, hi. And it'll just, after a short pause, it'll finally just say, Hello, hi. <laughs> Can you tell me Gosh. what's happened in the city? Ah. Huh. Can you tell me what's in it for me if I tell you that? Well, I've got some berries in my pocket. Good for you. I don't uh, want berries. Well, what do you want? Fish, succulent fish. I like the don't have, the docks. have any, but I'm sure we could find some at the docks for you. I'd be happy to help you look. If you open if you... one of the barrels at the docks, I can't do it. Certainly, I'll open a barrel for you. Humans keep them all cased in wood to stop me getting in. So rude of them. Ah. 
I agree. Come, human, you will open the barrels and feed me fish until I am full, and then I may tell you. All right, let's go to the docks. Right, you know, hop down from the roof. Get that as we riot. <laughs> yeah, hop We're down from the roof, like, onto a balcony, and then it'll like follow you behind, but sort of cautiously, keeping a low profile to the ground, looking left and right every time it crosses a, a sort of junction crossroads. Everybody wants to be a cat. <laughs> you will be right. useful to me, human. Well. Only if you're useful to me, cat. Uh, cats never go back on a deal. All right, then. Uh, do you have a preference of barrel? And as you get to the docks, I guess you'll see Antigonus, and Antigonus, you see Kara sort of talking to a cat, which just looks up at her, but you can't see it, but you can't hear it talking back, <laughs> effectively. Uh, you could probably assume she knows. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, but, um, the, the cat will just uh, lift a paw, and point to one that seems to be um, a bit smellier than the others. All right. That's the oh. one. Uh, Antigonus, Antigonus, could you help me open this barrel? Um, uh, yeah. It, it'll uh, be worth it, I promise. The, the cat, he's hungry, but he's yeah, been here okay. overnight. He can tell us what's happened. It's been a few weird days. I know that you're kind of losing it, but let's just feed the cat and move on, all right? So I'll open the barrel for her. Smart human. I get like my mace to just like sort of pry it open. Get the brute <laughs> to do the work. Very smart. Uh, uh, yes, I, I thought so. Mm. Got well, a good head on your shoulders, <laughs> haven't you? Feed me first, and then if I am satisfied, I'll answer your questions. All right. I'll just grab some of this nasty, smelly fish and hand it to the cat. Which to the cat is like divine ambrosia. It's just like <laughs> stuffing its face with it every time you put it down. It's swallowing things whole until finally, after a few minutes, you put down a handful of horrible um, rotten fish and it just doesn't take it to it anymore. And it sort of leans back and licks its lips and looks up at you. Have you had your fill? Maybe. Maybe there's something else I want now. Goodness, what now? I'm bored, all the humans have gone, so. Where have they gone? That's what I want to know, what happened? If I tell you, will you do something else for me? Yes. Okay. Make a persuasion check, <laughs> or, or deception, <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> what Indigenous is watching right now, he's sort of taking a knee and he's just watching Mew Mew. Meow meow. Meow meow meow. <laughs> Back and forth. But somehow Antigonus, the cat just seems very smug and proud of itself. Even to your yeah, like non-druid sensibility. Finally can... someone's <laughs> role-played a cat properly. We all know we all know cats are fucking assholes. Yeah. Yes, very sassy cat. Um I only rolled a twelve. Twelve. Okay. So no no. You know the rules. You help me, then I help you. Well, I've helped you with fill your belly and you haven't helped me yet. Well, one more thing, and perhaps I'll divulge the information you seek. What? I want a bed. A bed? A bed with no blood on it, and I want all the cushions in town, the softest cushions, in the biggest building, and I want no other cats near me. <laughs> all right. Um, I don't know how to get rid of all the other cats, or... Go to Adeus's manor. That's where the biggest, the biggest house in the in the town is. That's the house I want. Oh, you know then which house the... belongs to Adeus. Yes, let's go there. Uh -huh. Follow me, follow me. Closely now, human. Leave the brute. We won't need him anymore. All right. Uh, Antigonus, uh, I'm going to go with the cat for a minute. You stay here. Don't worry. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. Have yeah. fun. <laughs> He leads you through very narrow streets to this very compact and pushed together town uh, until you get to sort of what looks to be like almost a tower at first glance, but it turns out to be a wide building with three layers, taller than it can look across the town. So the only town, the only building in the uh, whole town really that has three stories. So the cat just looks to you and says, that's the one, that's my new home. Yes, a fine home it is. And you've got to make sure no other cats come in here. With a dais gone, now I can rule this town the way it should be. You can. You'll make a fine ruler of Eritrea. And I shall make you my pet. I, I don't know about that. We will come to this conversation later. For now, open the door for me. All right. 
Okay. And they'll walk in, walk in ahead of you as soon as you open the door and look around, saying, yes, yes, this is suitable. Fetch all the peasants, uh, fetch all the cushions from the um, town, uh, not the town, fetch, fetch all the cushions from the manor and bring them to the top floor. That's where I'll make my bed. Look here. This is a uh, I do for you, you do for me. Oh, but we're I'd so like close to, to being house. done. We're so close. I will tell you everything. I just need the cushions. All right. Oh, you can take him for a ride by a cat. Yeah. <laughs> it goes up the stairs to the top floor. What are you doing there, Kara? Gathering cushions <laughs> and trying to like clean up, dust them off a little bit, make them kind of nice. Absolutely. Yeah, you found a good few around the house. Um, but roll me an investigation check as you go around um, a day's okay. manner. I wish the con people of the party could tell you you're getting conned. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 14. 14, yeah. Uh, you find the best cushions in the house, pretty much. Uh, um, Adeus' own bed. Top of the like, line cushion. Goose feather down and stuff uh, on top of Adeus' like, um, very sort of simple bed. It's, it's ancient Greece, after all, you know. But um, you do find some things that are luxury sort of comfort items from distant empires and things. Well-constructed silks and things that Adeus sort of had in his manner. But approaching the top floor, you'll see that it is the bedroom itself. And already on the bed, you see the cat sort of pulling at the fabric in its claws and then letting it drop as it sort of makes a bed for itself. <laughs> I've, I've brought you some cushions. They look oh. really nice. Yes, yes, they're perfect. Well done, well done. I'll make sure to get you a treat as well. Put them here around me so I'm in a All sort right. of walls around me. You know what there I mean? Yes, yes, nice this is great. Cat. Oh, wow. I'm so happy. Comfy, are you? Yes, yes. I'm very comfy. All right, out with it. Yes, we're so close to being done. There's just one thing I need from you now to make it mm. all perfect. Oh, what's that? I want you to bring me some milk. No. I'm parched. The fish is I... very salty. And I, I'm, I can't, if I wanted to tell you, I would. But my mouth, I, I'm parched. I, I can't talk. Look here, cat. I don't have all day. The city, there is no one in the city. They're all dead. I, I don't know where to find any milk. I haven't time for this. Oh, but I know so much and I'm so willing oh, to tell you. you. Well, here's the thing. If you don't tell me, then I won't be able to go and stop those evil dead things that killed everything in this city. And you'll probably be next on the menu. Hmm. All right, roll me a persuasion check. <laughs> or an intimidation, your choice. Then, no, like, pass us both. Horribly uncharismatic. So, <laughs> I rolled a nat one. A nat one, okay. <laughs> it says, yes, that's very well and good, but I managed to survive the first bout of people attacking. I managed, I'm sure, to survive the next. It seems like you're in much more need for my information than I am to give it to you. So, chop, chop, go and get my milk now, sweet pet. I'll make sure All to give right. you a treat when you get back. Is this the last thing? Um, almost. I no. Mm. I have got a new smelly fish. I've made you a bed. That's two things. You've given me nothing. This is supposed to be one for one. Already, you owe oh, me. Yes, yes, yes. Very well. I'll tell you something. And this is a secret, so you mustn't tell anyone else. But when those things attacked Eritrea, they didn't take any of the cats. Yup. <laughs> and he'll lean back with a knowing look on his face and sort of make his bed here and says, is that enough information? If, it, if you don't believe it, I'm living proof. I, I believe you, but that's just incredibly not useful. Okay, they, they, I'll tell you this. They left by the sea and they took all the dead humans with them. They piled they piled them all up and took them? Yes, they put them on some boats. Did they have a leader? Uh, they had a big man with them, bigger than the rest of the humans. I don't know what a large human is, so much to speak, but this one, his head was bigger than the others. His head was bigger? He had a large head. Okay. Believe me, cats well... notice these things. All right, that's somewhat useful. You get comfy, I'll go look for some milk. Yes, yes, hurry up there, I'm getting a bit thirsty. <laughs> I'm gonna go downstairs and pray that there's some milk somewhere. You can try, I mean, if you're looking around, uh, roll me an investigation check. <laughs> oh, 
lord. Kind of finish the cat arc. <laughs> I think we need to rename this episode. <laughs> well, I rolled a seven. Come back. A seven. <laughs> the cat milk. Yeah, you can't find any milk, unfortunately. I think, I think Drew might have his uh, caption clips for this. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, you can't find any milk around, unfortunately. I'm can I find gonna... anything else that I could you attempt can find to some wine. barter with? Okay. Um, you mean cat poison? That. Yeah, wine and water. Uh, yeah, remember, I'm not sure if you, you'd probably know this is a druid, but wine is toxic to cats, I'm pretty yeah. sure. So, <laughs> I mean, you could betray him with the wine. Yeah, does he know that? <laughs> um, I don't think he would. Like, He's a cat, so he'd probably lap up anything you give to him, or at least try it. <laughs> All right. Um, I'll head back up. Hello. Welcome Hello. to my kingdom. Yes, in a lovely kingdom it is. So, mm. um, there's no milk. What a shame. There's water. And there's this juice wine stuff. Um, I could get I... water before all this. And now I, as leader of Eritrea, will drink milk and milk alone. Preferably well, I guess you won't be drinking anything, so you're going to end up parched because there's no milk in Eritrea. That may be the case, yes. Humans do bring the milk. How about this? I will employ you as my retainer. You deliver milk to me every day from now on, no. and I'll make yeah, sure you are compensated with all the information about Eritrea I can give. Oh, well, as lovely as that sounds, I have other things to do i've got to figure out what's going on what's caused these undead they may be attacking other cities oh. they may be pillaging all the milk in all of greece by now so Much if you don't want to give me other any other information then i'm going to leave you to your kingdom very well you've served me well expect bountiful gifts to be laden upon you in the future when eritrea is back on its feet i will remember that you delivered me to this position what is your name Kara. Kara, a simple human name, but a name nonetheless. Well done, Kara. I'm not actually a human, but okay. Um, what is your name, Kat? It's, ah, my name. It is um, Sephotocles. Ah, lovely. Sepho right. Sephotocles of Eritrea, of course. All right, Sephotocles of Eritrea. It's been a pleasure. It. It's the pleasure, I'm sure, has been all yours indeed. I really hope that those dead things don't come back and kill you. No, that's fine. Be gone now, Kara. I tire oh. of your presence. Oh, yes, indeed. The feeling's mutual. Retur return to me if you find any milk. <laughs> I'm gonna head out. <laughs> if not, you're an almost unwelcome back if you can't find any. And he'll just talk as you walk down the <laughs> stairs. You can still hear him talking about his new kingdom of Eritrea. Even oh as you leave goodness. from the open doors in the balcony. Just going. A tiny little thing. And when I'm back, you'll get me. And I, I will rule Eritrea over all cats and the dogs. And the dogs will bow too. And you can hear it <laughs> as, you, as you're walking down the street. <laughs> all right. I'm just going to make my way back toward the group. Yeah, well done. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, Ooh, that's take a, a turn. Uh, take a point of inspiration, Kara, yeah. for dealing with a cat. <laughs> I could just imagine okay. Herodotus would have burnt that place down by now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. Regen of the pie. We'll say everyone conglomerates in sort of the center of town. Unless anyone's got I have, I have one more, one one more little yeah. task on the way there. Sure, go ahead, uh, I just want to stop me. by the place that I'd been refilling the uh, pottery supplies. And I just want to, assuming that maybe he wouldn't have taken all that stuff. So I just want to re up on some clay and some tools anything in that shop that I might have. Yeah, sure thing. And um, that's one of the things that Aridius really wouldn't have paid much to attention to. So you can still get a good amount of potting supplies from this place. Um, inks to draw on, cast um, vases after they've been molded and burnt, uh, burned, um, put in the oven to, you know, take shape and things. Uh, you can find a resupply of clay, um, all, that, all that kind of thing. Yeah, no problem. Awesome. I, w I also wanted to go to the paints and stuff like that but i wanted to look around as well like in investigation or whatever if you want to roll an investigation check yeah. looking around you surely can Ooh, 17 on a dice so that is investigation that's 23 23 okay yeah i uh, will say that you easily find the um 
the place that you originally came to, to actually Eritrea to see, some sort of well-to-do um, parchment and scroll store with uh, fine papyrus from all over the empire, and you'll indeed find in there um, a large amount of scrolls and incense and ink and parchment. Lovely. I'll take some. I would like to not be self-serving and go to the temple to actually get information. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah. I will follow and rob the temple. <laughs> <laughs> sure thing. Um, you know where the temple is. The same three statues stand outside the front proudly. Um, the, but the, behind them is the statue of Dionysus, of course. But uh, going in, you'll see the same route that you took in the first place, and you were followed by that wave upon wave of... Um, disgusting sort of mash of herd of creatures that followed you in. Um, right. But yeah, you've seen just the broken statue where Karnak collapsed this passage upon the escape route, but you don't see anyone in the temple, only a mess of things knocked over, torn off walls, but no bodies. On that, like, pass through our old our old track, um, is there any sign that people have sort of passed through after us, after the army? Um, as much as you could tell, any any remnants of the room where the oracle originally resided. Um, Make me a survival check, hide easy, because that's a difficult thing you're trying to ask. Yeah, just... I was going to say, is there any blood, or is everything gone? Uh, well, there will be blood around, surely. Okay. Small puddles and stains and certain pieces of fabric and bit here to there, but mm, nothing's really been notably taken. 16, and I'm also looking for Karnak. Yeah, sure. You don't see Karnak. You don't see any bodies here. But um, regarding if someone's been here since, you'd imagine that possibly someone has. You're unsure, though. Okay, and no, no sign of Karnak whatsoever? His weapon? Anything? Um, no. Okay. Nothing of Karnak's remain. I don't know what I was looking for, but definitely didn't find it. Yelling's like looking in every bowl, and every part, every vase, everything, to see if there's any like donations in it uh, oh, right, that she okay. can find. Yeah, any, sure. Anything like that, anything of value. There will be few drachmi donations, surely, that you can Ooh. find. So go ahead and add um, go and add um, 20 drachmi to your uh, roll. And that 20 on okay. That's my lucky um, day. 20 drachmi, you can add to your inventory, yeah? Yeah, you just wasted his nat 20 in a non-combat, so that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, yeah. I'm just gonna fudge it to kill you all anyway. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Boss. <laughs> if you were the leader of some big undead army of Greek and Trojan soldiers, why would you want to attack the Pythia? Maybe they didn't get their question answered. Seems like a very petty reason. Just murder a lot of people. Look, it, it upset me, so if I'm if I'm being if I'm being oh, a sentimental, I think if I'm being serious, if she could make us see that vision that I don't even know what that was, but she has some power, as much as I hate to say that I was wrong. Right, but also bring all the, the possible heroes here. An attack then it's, it's very purposeful attack the oracle attack all the people who could potentially defend if Greece. i was going to pull off no. a heist i would want no witnesses the oracle you can see uh, everything apparently and uh, i would want no one that could stop me I'd want guards to either have been taken care of or led away, and heroes seem to be the thing that stops the bad guys. I think making a place where you can kill as many heroes as possible and take out the person that would know when something was wrong, it's, it's, it's quite a smart plan. Especially since they weren't using living soldiers, they didn't have to worry about their army being injured. Right. I'm just um, saying. Yeah, she's sort of just very contemplative, um, like thinking about it while they're we're in like that temple space. Harry, on on recollection, um, does the had a pretty good perception rule on looking at that guy as we left, and I imagine that the vision was maybe. Um, 
does, did he look to be any nationality? Like, does, does he look Egyptian? Does he look Persian? Um, Which guy are you referring to? The one we saw leaving, like sort of commanding the army really tall on ah, a horse. Okay, sure. Or uh, the one from the vision with the Pythia. Roll a other? history check. Histories plus two. 18. 18. Um, yeah. Okay. It's an army of Trojan and Greek soldiers. Well, um, where does it look like he's, yeah, he yeah. hails from? Well, um, so it's safe to assume that these are people who fought for either Greece or Troy. Mm hmm. Um, thinking back to stories you've been told of the war over the past month since it ended, um, and you can think of only one person but who perhaps um I just figured who it is fought with a mall and fought with um, as a large man so to speak um if you were put to put all the things you've learned together about they're all trojan and greece soldiers they're all undead so stands to reason this is a large greek soldier from the army you could tell that died during the trojan war and fought with a mall so putting all the things together you possibly learn you're probably looking at a man known as ajax the greater yeah Okay. Mm or what remains of Ajax the Greater. He also was looked very undead himself. Couldn't really tell. You only saw him from behind. You only saw his weapon. But you saw that he had a bit more command over himself than the rest of the people. He was at the top of the horse. So that alone separated him from the ravaging horde that overtook the town. Right. Um, do I know anything of why he would be attacking the Eritrea specifically, like any uh, any motivation, deductive reasoning. Mm, so okay. Leave that okay, one okay. So, so I guess sort of after considering that a bit and spacing out uh -huh. mid conversation with Yaling, <laughs> and then I do this heist. It's it's a fairly good plan. I mean, you can use it a bunch of different ways. We could even do a similar thing in the future. Yeah, of course. We have to come up with a good name for that one, too. Shouldn't we go um, meet up with everyone? I think there's nothing left here. I was hoping to find our, our soldier's friend, but... Yeah, I think I've picked this place clean anyways. Seems that man came this way as well. I think, I think we chose like... the wrong path. If we go back and they've got yeah. loot, I'm gonna be mad. For like for the first time in a while, despite normally being a looting person, obviously, just this exasperated it starts walking out of the temple. Come yeah. on. But yeah, I will re clarify that you only think that this may be Ajax the Grady. You're not hundred percent sure. You're I'm not even sure she knows who that is, so it's yeah, fine. Sure, just... No problem. I mean you would have to for the role to make sense, but you know, like so well, yeah, just, just I get what you're saying. Yeah, sure. So yeah, unless there's anything else anyone wants to be doing, I'll say that the party conglomerates in the center of town. Yep. Uh, where the aqueduct sort of falls into a fountain that you'll see each other coming close to one another again and decide to group up. So I'll let you guys take the floor there as you find each other in the center of Eritrea. Anybody approaching will see Prey looking at uh, a new sword. It looks very nice. Does Herodotus notice the anything glowing off the spear that one of them found? Uh, the only thing that's glowing to you right now is the box and the sword. Okay. Anyone find anything? Well, useful? I don't have a theory. Oh, oh, useful. Well, not, not all at once, jeez. <laughs> They're left by sea. Indeed. No ships here. The dock was full with heroes and ships before. They, must have they loaded all the bodies onto the boats and left by sea. That makes sense. They uh, did not leave by land. Um, if the catapults are any judge of numbers, then they were larger than a legion. So at least 6,000 strong. And that's just coming in. We would imagine that from the vision, a man who can reanimate would have found more fuel for the fire. That's probably why they took the bodies. Smart I imagine man. there were no boats at all. Not Harry, a one. Harry, can I do an arcana check? Obviously, you're about necromancy and necromancers. Mm, How many yeah, would be roll, needed to roll, to roll raise nine. an arm an army of this? Arcana plus six, Ooh, sixteen total. Mm, no, unfortunately not. Necromancy is the most guarded of all schools of magic. That you know. 
uh, and it's not practiced by but i know anyone. it's necromancy i just yeah uh yeah it's that sort of swept under the rug um school of magic that the seven sages of greece never allowed into their circle eight schools of magic seven sages of greece mm. uh, only one school was disallowed can i do any history checks of anyone that was practicing necromancy um that was that was banned from necromancy. i'd say most likely that includes in your arcana because it's more of an arcana check i'd say um but yeah i mean i'd say that maybe you'd have a moment of clarity in your otherwise foggy memory and you can picture what the scene was which is well known amongst all the wizards of greece of um some 150 years ago where the seven sages of greece had a council where they um, anointed themselves as the leader of all magic in greece and mm -hmm. um, they got together in athens and they each noted to themselves a certain speciality um, only one came with the idea of making himself the eighth sage, um, sage of necromancy, and he was turned away. Do I reckon? Do I remember the name? Or you remember the name as being Phericides of Cyros? Can you put that in? Right we've, got, we, we, we've, we've got it, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've gotten the name a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 around the name. It's floating around different chats at this point. So yeah, you notice that? Um, oh Phris yeah, I can see it. Yeah, yeah Phericides yeah. of Cyros was turned away. Trying to introduce necromancy to the seven sages of Greece as the eighth school of magic. Okay. Does Eradites say anything out loud? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, he'll just be sort of like fumbling <laughs> over in his head at the moment. Yeah. He'll do this sort of fucking Samuel Tally thing where he, he writes uh, it down and it's the key to uh, open and he just flips uh, the page. Uh, like, uh, all right, whatever. <laughs> I seem to have a light bulb moment. Something. Oh, yeah, yes. He was, he. He was the eighth sage. Well, Who? well, do you not know any of your history, boy? Well, I know a lot of history, but uh, well, you know, he, he know there were seven sages. And do I, I, I have expertise in history? Would I know who the seven sages are? They're very, very, very popular people. They're they're all dead, of course, but um, they were extremely powerful wizards that yeah. existed at the time, some long, so about two centuries ago, around. Yes, I know who the seven sages are. Well, there was meant to be an eight. Who was he? Oh, God, say his name. Uh, uh, Ferocities. Ferocities? Yes. Of, Sa of Cyrus. Hey, yes, he, he, was, he was turned away. He was refused. That's the name the Oracle said, right? Yes. Yes, that is who killed Karnak. Is it his school of magic who killed Karnak, or it's him himself? Oh, he's dead. It's definitely necromancy, boy. Right, but could one use necromancy to extend one's life? It seems. I don't mean. I don't know. I've not practiced it. No one's allowed. Yes, but could it be done? Uh, do you have any idea? Oh, possibly. Hmm. Who knows? Well, if it can bring back the dead, I can't see why it wouldn't let you not die. But the dead that they brought back, they were without a mind. They were drones. It, it, it would need to be extremely powerful to bring back an army. Oh, it was good man. Seven. Great. I've seen men who have been rejected, kill, and become monsters. It would not surprise me if this man, because of his story, has decided to take a uh, his form of vengeance. At least that is information we can use. Have we gotten what we need here, then? I think so. Well, where did everybody go? I went outside the city and I investigated the catapults. Uh, well, I've that... discovered a bigger problem if they left by sea. I don't know if you guys know much about this uh, area, but it has a lot of access to different parts of the world, especially Greece. I arrived here almost directly from the hills outside of Athens using the docks. If they're going to Athens, they may beat us there. Yes, one thing does comfort me, however. They took every boat, meaning they did not have the time to choose the best ones, meaning they will be slower than normal. But uh, even so, by sea is faster than by land. I know that at least, but not. Uh, I'm not very experienced with the sea. 
I have a suspicion that this attack was strategic. All of the heroes of the world were gathered here. I, I had that thought as well, and... Uh, Yelling yeah, looks over at Larkin, like... <laughs> well, well, maybe we could find an Avery. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> Perhaps he wanted to... She's just looking oh, at her spin that she got, just like... <laughs> Not to ruin our little history lesson, but... A lot of this conversation might be helpful on the road if we're going to head back to Xenopolis. Any other places we are going to check? Do I know if there's an Avery here or anything? Uh, there is not an Avery there, no. Okay. Unfortunately not. Uh, we, we just we checked where we... The, the passage where we travelled, the, the barn and the, the temple. Um, no, no bodies anywhere, but that seems to be pretty consistent. No leaving by land, you leave by sea, you don't leave much of a trace. I think that's a dead end. Well, I'd sail after them, but obviously we can't. We don't have any devices. Well, how did they get here? Catapults. Yes. <laughs> but where from? From up on the hill. They did not come or leave by land, so they must have brought them by sea. They arrived with a smaller army than they left with. They arrived on boats, and they took all the boats away to take on their new Soldiers? It's possible. Pray, wait. Yes. Um, this isn't exactly a, a pleasant thing, but in this line of conversation, I, I'm worried that your friend is maybe one of them now. I just... We might not have to face that, but... Just, I don't I don't know. It, it feels... Uh, he wasn't there. None of his things were there. That and surprised me. Herodotus? Yes, my dear. How long... How... If th you were uh, a necromancer, as you speak, how how far away could you raise a body? I'm afraid I don't know that, my dear. Necromancy was forbidden. It could be... I could only imagine it would be close. Right. Once, once risen, it could travel. I don't know. All right. Well, if he's powerful enough to raise an entire army, he might not be bound by the same rules of magic that others are. I'm just thinking our one messenger is uh, <laughs> spending a lot of time with a corpse. What do you mean? If he can Stick. raise from a distance. Well, well, we know the bodies were put on the boat. They were piled on the boats. They, they weren't. They didn't get up and move on them themselves, did they? That's true. Uh, no, the bodies were loaded onto the boat. So perhaps this necromancy takes time. No offense, everyone. This is really important conversation. Um, but. I think Antigonus has a point. Can we have it on the road? Unless there's anywhere else I here we need yeah. to... I sort of walked away. It was like saddling up the donkeys again. Sure, yes. Uh, the, the first boy he uh, left with a horse and a cart is uh, horses in the town? Um, you'll find on the outskirts of the town and the farms and things that there is a few of, not just the one you originally approached, but there'll be several places that have stray horses. Well, not stray. Recently stray ho strayed horses. That, um, you, I mean... <laughs> It's up to you if they take them or not, though. They uh, are there. Antigone, I, I know you named the donkey horse, but uh, now might be an opportunity to do a trade. <laughs> and uh, Larkin, if we're leaving, do you want to drop that hand? Oh, yeah, like the mage hand is still <laughs> holding this little undead hand, which will now float over to Herodotus. Yeah. Um, this is so kid. impressive. You've got some magics of your own. Just, just a little. Um, does I know you, you've said you're not a necrom necromancer, but um, I don't know. You seem to write a lot of things down. Maybe you can study oh, that. Well, thank, well, thank you. I might just be yes. a dead hand, but I can I look know. for a jar of some sort and put it in? You find a vase, not yeah. a jar, though. Oh, a vase, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not too hard to find. There's many vases around. Find one. <laughs> Was there anything else worth here? Um, no magic coming off the hand either. 
Um, no. It's disembodied dead hand. So I do try to wrangle up a couple horses after hearing Prewitz, uh scouted them out. <laughs> See if we can upgrade yeah. our ride I'll here. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> sure. Um, go ahead and make me an animal handling check with advantage because you're being helped by... Um, anyway, I want you to describe to me how you're going to be trying to get these horses exactly. There's Zach. <laughs> um, <laughs> let let so it reflect first... your role. <laughs> I'm not going to ask what your role was. You're just going yeah, well... to have to describe to me the situation and how it plays out. <laughs> Antigonus the horse whisperer. Um, so uh, basically I gather up a bunch of uh, hay from the nearby barns and I sort of set it around in a circle and I make a big bright light in the middle and I um, I ask uh, Yaling to play a little music because music soothes the savage beast. <laughs> and because my role is a 25, a oh, flock wow. of <laughs> a big herd of horses just sort of toward this. Yeah. I'm just in the center with my castanets. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you are engulfed by horses. The horse whisperer, yeah. Just hear like constantly, like, <laughs> <laughs> and so just like very quite pleased to let eat out the hay out of your hand and sort of, uh, yeah. get, you know, you let get let them let you pet them and stuff as the just flock around you. You know, get a choice of colours and all sorts of different styles and sizes. Whether you want the That's strong horse point. or the quick horse or whatever you want the the Mustang, who knows? Is there a like a golden horse that is like fast, like a quick quick horse? <laughs> Is there a golden horse that is fast? Yes. I, um, there's Sh- Shadowmere. Can I like? Not, I would really like, like a Trojan uh, horse. Not like a proper gold, but like that. Oh that really? Because kind of I like... thought you meant a horse made out of solid gold. I, I, know, I know. I would. T- I would take I, that. I wouldn't I have any objections. Proper gold. Right, yeah. Okay. Um. There will be a sort of very light blonde head horse. Um. Whether or not it's quick, I'll have to have you roll an animal handling check to find. See if you can single out what is the quickest horse. Do I need to roll it? Yeah. Okay, so that's a, it's a 15 on the dice, and then ha, da, 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 da. animal handling so I can get a horse that looks like me. Uh, that is 17. <laughs> yeah, regardless of whether or not it's quick, you can definitely choose the golden one. Question is if it's quick. Um, with a 17, you'll sort of take a look around, and you'll find it's probably to be on the high percentile of the fast horses that are shrouding. Um Zach and yourself, sorry, Antigonus and yourself. Um, but yeah, it's not the fastest one, but it is definitely the one that looks like the one you want in terms of color. I choose the ugliest one. All right, yeah. <laughs> there is a horse there with one eye, and it's got yeah. one nostril is like six times the size of the other. And as it yeah. sort of whinnies like the rest, you'll notice it has a, just a few teeth left, and its mane is cut poorly, and it's got like a very unflattering stripe down its mane, which See, just yeah. sort of like. The, the, the stripe almost looks like, I don't know, a penis or something. Yeah, <laughs> it's a go faster stripe. It's I, as, a, it's I not, as a, it's I as me. I of an unflattering stripe. <laughs> like, I want that horse yeah. in real life. Yeah. <laughs> Yelling wants the golden one. <laughs> okay, sure. I pat him very well and I say, I'll name you Donkey. All right, sure. <laughs> and as you say, he's low to the ground. Like, on first glance, some people might expect this to be a donkey purely because it's extremely short, stubby legs. Um, yeah, yeah. And a very extremely uh, overbearing torso, which almost brushes the ground at some points when he passes over a hill, same way like a, a car might do when it's passing a certain steep hill. But yeah, it's a it's an exceptionally <laughs> ugly horse. <laughs> I'm sure this won't work, but I will I will grab my holy symbol and rub its uh, back and cast mending. <laughs> mending, wow! <laughs> that, that does anything, but. Uh, I, I don't, don't really. Think I, yeah, you, I, I think you know quite well that probably won't work. <laughs> it's more just to make him feel like yeah. I'm trying. Yeah. Horse looks visibly right. insulted that you thought he needed mending. I want to day and to just to go up to someone who's crying and doesn't know what to do. Mending. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I feel like a precedent has been set. Everybody now needs to choose their horse. Uh, uh-huh. Praywood is going to choose the one that looks experienced but not too old. Yeah, sure. You'll see one that's actually got some battle scars on it. So, like, yeah. actual cuts that have been healed over time. Looks like it's a, sort of not the twilight of its life, but it's seen its war days and it's been put out to pasture. Except now, it still holds the gate of a war horse. War oh, horse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, is everyone satisfied? Herodotus will get on, but obviously he gets on the wrong way by accident. Oh! All right. Oh, my mind hasn't got a head! <laughs> <laughs> which, uh, yeah, which horse have you got on? Is it like a... Uh, I, I, a pony or something. 
a pony, yeah. So you get a young sort of smaller horse that's very spry and very eager to run around. You have difficulty controlling it, but sure, you grab, grab yourself a pony. And I want anyone to make a note of what kind of horse they have because I can't keep track of all that. I'm just riding as fast as I can. But um, all right, is anyone interested else in choosing a horse like Kara or um, Larkin? You I want an Appaloosa, a spotted one. Yeah, sure. Um, looking around, you'll find one that looks like an Appaloosa, but for the sake of geography, I can't say it's an Appaloosa, but it looks like one. It's got all the same markings, so, you know. <laughs> I want, I want like, a quirky looking horse. Like, not the ugliest one, but one that has, like, I don't know. Yeah, you find a horse that has one it's leg like shorter than all the others. Oh, the three-legged <laughs> horse. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, so something distinct, sure. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You find a horse that, um, let's think, what makes a horse distinct? Um, <laughs> it's got no ears, we'll say that. Perfect. Perfect. Um, but it has two tails. All right. <laughs> I'm not sure I took a, a mutated horse? Yeah, it's mutated. <laughs> like, Perfect. It's, it's, you get so the sense needed. that this isn't some feat of magic, it's just genetics. And this horse drew a bum card. Right. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. It's not awesome. just got no ears, but flat patches of skin. So they weren't cut off. It was just born with no ears and two yep. tails. Larkin's like petting his and, neck and, and um, six eyes. <laughs> like, some, uh, some some animal friendship <laughs> magic is is seeping uh, into into the the pets and scratches sure of, of its thing, neck. Sure thing. Larkin mounts a horse and just another eye opens on the back of its neck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you it's found. Magical. The Lovecraftian horse. <laughs> All right. Everyone knows HB stands for horsepower. So, um, right. Carrying on. You guys have found a good amount of horses now. Um, but yeah, sure. You guys, actually, you can make pace now. It's back to um, Sinopolis that you know effectively cuts the t journey into a quarter of what it was on the way here. So, not a problem there. Even though the pony that Herodotus is on takes very um, copious detours to smell certain plants, sort of circle around and do like trots very proudly, and sometimes it even speeds up the rest of, against the rest of the pack showing off. But you have very little control over yours. And um, the other one who's really slowing down is um, Antigonus's, which is just sort of plodding along, sort of panting for air in a very unflattering way, as though it's gasping and its throat can't really close and open properly. You can just hear this horrible. <laughs> <laughs> As behind you, the party is Antigonus's horse struggles to keep pace. I know, buddy. Life is <laughs> suffering. I know. <laughs> I'm just holding mine by the reins like this. <laughs> All right. So making it back to Xenopolis is easy enough. Is there anything you'd like to do in Xenopolis? Because you enter the town again, same as before. Um, people generally trying to stay away from you as you see people scattering from the street as horses approach. <sighs> I guess the first thing is to uh, find Aquilus and um, see what route we want to take to get to Athens. What do we do with these horses? We keep feeding them. Imagine. Yes, we'll feed them and you take them with us. Antigonus, uh, you seem to have a way with the horses. Would you mind staying uh, with them? Well, uh, well, I can go. Uh, Rotatus, would you like to get to Aquilus with me? Oh, sure. I'll sort of try and get off the horse. And Togans, do you want me to sing for the horses again or dance? Absolutely, I would like that, yeah. I have something I want to try, so this may be a good time to try it. Great. It is getting towards dusk now, I'll remind you, because um, effectively walking back to Eritrea is a good six hours walk. Exploring Eritrea, I'm going to say, is three hours. And then getting back here is about an hour and a half. So you're looking at around 6 to 7 p.m. Where you guys are now? Okay. Um, wherever we sort of settle and let you know, Preywit and Herodotus just go get Aquilus and the body of the Pythia, and they're doing horse things. I want to go off about like a hundred feet and just open the box and to see what happens. All right, you can roll one d hundred if you're getting curious just to see what happens. Yeah, we can keep going. I'll roll that and then just yeah, TPK. Sure. <laughs> Aquilus is um still standing around in the temple. Um, this by this point, he's wrapped the Pythia, or what you assume to be the Pythia, in um, bandages that sort of surround her. Not in any sort of mummification way, more in a way to protect her from the elements, to keep her identity hidden. 
Aquiles, uh, we have returned with well, bad news and horses. Uh, would you like to leave tomorrow morning or today, tonight? I'd prefer not to travel in the night. The Pythia is well looked after by these priestesses. They can wait another day, but then I recommend we make haste. Yes. I will inform the others, unless there is anything else you would like to say. I wait on you. <clears throat> All right. Somewhere so. in the distance, yeah, just the horses. <laughs> nah. sc screaming. The box opens, and there's just like nah. a, a, a ear shattering scream <laughs> for a minute. And then it stops. Okay, sure. So all of you will hear this, by the way. Like randomly on in some certain direction in which um Larkin slinked off and there is a consistent minute long street scream, which sounds a bit strange in the fact that it never even stops to draw air. It's Does just it? like a minute long consistent sort of scream, bone curdling, touching like your innermost sensitive like um perceptions of what this may it, cause this. Is it like a woman's scream? So quick people, the, the undead are here. Imagine yeah, a scream. Greywood draws both his swords and just starts booking it out of the temple towards yeah. the screen. Because if Yarling knows that Larkin went that way and then there's a scream, if it's a feminine scream, Yarling's just going to bolt it to Sure, well, there's several people going there. What do they see Larkin when they get there? <laughs> they see Larkin standing there, standing over a box on the floor that's just open and like in horror going like <laughs> what the fuck is happening Larkin what are you doing and I don't know, Yelling's gonna try and kick this. the box shut if she can <laughs> just can't try yeah. and shut it with her foot alright something strange happens as you touch the box though oh no <laughs> uh, Yelling it's nothing too terrible you just kick it and it lands um, upside down um, about um, five yards away from you uh, but it corrects itself and sort of a strange sort of it lifts off the ground for a certain second places itself and it puts itself down and it turns first of all towards very slowly on the ground turning to face you yelling then larkin it turns to no, 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 no. but then it turns and faces off into the distance somewhere else does North it seem place. to be m moving no, no, it's just, it's basically pivoting on a single spot as it sort of drags the earth around it. You can see a circle it, of earth as it is moves. Is it still screaming? No, no, it's closed down now. It's never done that before. Hell, Larkin, I don't like this box. I don't think you should use it anymore. I mean, I, I understand that, but at the same time, Sometimes I just can't help it. There's the sound of footfalls and what is going on? With scrap like pick it up this time. Nothing. It's fine. People and black. Antigonus tries to wrangle the horses, which I'm sure went you know ape shit. What happened? What was the screaming? Did you kill another minotaur? Yep, definitely that. Obviously not. What happened? Lord, can uh, I think it's best they know? Well, no. What? How do you explain that? I don't think even I can protect you from that yeah. box. Here's something strange, though, Larkin. Something's happening now which you haven't experienced yet. Something peculiar concerning the box that you hold in your hands that you've become so accustomed to, but you've never felt it like this before. It's got a certain weight to it, but not a weight that draws it to the ground like gravity, more a weight that's pulling it in a certain direction. As though it's as though someone's got a string attached to it and they're tugging ever so lightly. But it's as though if you held it on a very level surface, you feel like it would drag. But holding it, you can feel just a slight pull. Hold, hold, hold on. Not enough to, like, even the slightest yeah, yeah. bit of pressure against the opposite way will stop it. Yeah. Slightest of pulls. She's just like shushing them for a moment and just puts it down and just sees if it moves. Yeah, make a perception check. <laughs> I'm talking like end of X-Men perception check. <laughs> uh, 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 seven. Seven, doesn't move. Pick it back up, put it back on the sl slide up, sling it back on our back. 
Um, it feels like it's got drag now. Yeah, she just seems again contemplative about it, just confused. I, I, I don't know. Um, it just screamed. It wasn't me. No one's hurt. It just did that. Where did you get this box? It makes minotaurs do strange things and it screams. Got it long, long time ago. It never did this until recently. It keeps things in it and now it yells at me when I open it. I don't I, I don't know what to tell you, I'm sorry. I, you I asked the article about the box, right? No, she asked me. And she I, didn't even know what it was. No, but I wish she had. It'd be real helpful. Which well, at the no. time I just thought was her proving her inability to know things, but now... I, I, I'm I, sorry. I don't know. I'm sorry. I, I'd like everyone in the current vicinity to make a wisdom saving. Oh, you. no. Yeah. Oh. Everyone who's fun to look at this. Happening. Oh, no. Okay, so I'm with the horses. Five. Five. Five, okay. Should I roll the two? Fourteen. Fourteen, Twelve. okay. Twelve. That's everybody in current vicinity. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, wait. Is this magic? It is magic. Oh, I'm a gnome. I get advantage. Ah, okay. you okay. son of a... Sixteen. Sixteen. <laughs> Those are all fails. Even the sixteen. Are you kidding me? No. Oh, she... What would have been a pass? Hmm. Yeah. 126. Who knows what would have been a pass. But, as it is, you guys in character don't know that. Effectively, you just made to roll. Nothing happens. Ooh, I don't oh. want to make this. Oh, no. Do you goof. feel anything? No. <laughs> Larkin, I think True. wherever you found that thing... I think it oh. needs to go back. Do you mean to go back to Egypt? You got it from... It's from home. I've had it since I was a little girl. I didn't... I didn't, I didn't just... I mean, no, I scavenged, but I didn't just find it near Eritrea or recently. It just, it just, just started being strange and bizarre and making the towards do weird things I've never seen. Can we, where's everyone? Can we forget about it? Never mind. I just, I'm just Larkin, curious. Was this why the guards were after you when we first met? Only indirectly. It wasn't th this specifically. It was just, I, I had, I had, had coin in it. And I don't know, maybe they thought, what is someone like that doing with that much coin? <laughs> You hear a shout from the back. Are we leaving tonight or are we leaving in the morning? Yep, tonight, please. Be great. No, we are leaving in the morning. Are Never we... mind. Yes. <clears throat> We're tonight. In the morning. <laughs> in the morning. Okay. Yeah. Well, as the sun <laughs> sort of sets on Xenopolis again, um, it's a much more. Um, the first few nights you were here, you heard the sort of rabble coming from the docks, but over the past few nights of resting, that sort of rabble doesn't exist anymore. It, it feels a lot calmer down there now. But yeah, other than that, if no one wants to do anything on their rest, that's where we'll, on this rest, that's where we'll call the break. And welcome back, everybody, to Pantheon with me, the DM Harry, joined by my six extremely talented adventurers that I'm always so happy to play with. So um, yeah, when we last left them and before the break, the decision had been made to travel in the morning. So we'll cut to there. Where's the sort of, uh, the, well, I don't know. How is Aquilus traveling? You guys all have horses. I mean, what's he doing? Is he taking the cart? Uh, Antigonus would offer to Herodotus, um, looks like you might need a little help uh, navigating there to keep up with the party. Maybe maybe uh, Aquilus can steer the horse and you ride along. Oh, yes. I don't mind. Yes. Sure. All right. Aquilus, so do you mind having a side saddle? I've had it plenty of times before. Remember, my job is to protect one person, so right. often found ourselves traveling on the same horse. Speaking of which, if you don't mind, and he'll walk past you and he'll still be cradling this bandage, um, sort of what looks to be a person, and he'll sling it across the back of the horse and tie it securely. And he'll pause for a second and put his hand on it and he'll bow his head 
and this lasts for a good 30 seconds of pure silence before he ra raises his head back up and shakes his shoulders and gives you a single nod. Antigonus as he hoists himself up on the same horse Herodotus behind him. Well then, let's be off. But okay, rounding the corners in the coastal road of Euboea, you come to the coastal city of Chalcis, which is quite a, an amazing sight. As you pass around the corner of a hill, it just becomes splayed out to you, an entire panorama of a city that is focused around a bridge. And many of you would have been here before. If you traveled to Eritrea by foot, you'd have had to have come through Chalcis. And Chalcis is a walled city, but on the outside of the walls, there's many square buildings that rise up, even taller than the walls in some situations. But the city itself is dominated by the statue itself, the statue and the bridge, which are together one. For Euboea and Greece, as the ancient tale goes, used to be joined together. So Euboea was not an island at all until the Titan or the giant, depending on the translation, um, Atreus decided he wanted an island. And he stood between both of these places and separated them through pure strength alone, creating the island of Euboea. Now, in honor of that, and Euboea being an island, the bridge that is in the center of Chalcis is the statue of a giant himself, with arms splayed side to side, along his arms and his forearms and his shoulders, and around the nape of his neck, you will walk from one side to the other, as this giant statue stands, pulling the two parts of the world side to side in twain. But around that, you see a large temple in the distance also, atop a small acropolis, atop the highest point in town. From here, you can't tell what that temple is or who to who it belongs. But other than that, all you see is docks and docks as far as the eye can see. Hundreds and hundreds of, of seagulls swarm as ships lay docked, ships lay going out. It doesn't seem if there's any panic that has been caused by Eritrea has not yet reached the city of Chalcis. So as you approach the main gates, they are open. And from the looks of the gates, they've not been closed in some time, with a collection of dirt appearing around the bottoms of each wooden gate. But I'll ask the party then, going into the Chalkis, what would you like to do? Where would you like to go? What time of day is it when we get there? Let's see. You set off at the first thing in the morning. And it's roughly, Xenopolis is equidistant between Eritrea and Chalkis, so should be about with, I'm going to say 10 a.m. I think it's a fair estimate on that. Do we need any supplies? I think Journey we could. To, uh, Athens, yeah, could take a while. I think we could use a pick me up. In the form of? I don't know. What's he looking around? Where is like the sound of maybe music or the most celebration being possibly <laughs> had, Harry? I need something exciting because yeah, these people no, are sad. Uh, yelling, uh, yelling his lock in, say about some entertainment. And uh, yelling mm -hmm. takes this opportunity to try out something new that she's been wanting to do. So, with her new spear, <laughs> what's the ground made of before I do this? <laughs> Mostly cobblestone roads, but you can find patches of dirt and earth around if you want. Um, she's going to pierce the spear fairly deep in the ground, and she's going to try and, starting slowly and gently, try and swing round it. And with her, um, like her kind of metallic stuff on her. Uh, all the all the all the clacky stuff on her outfit starts to like make noise now. Okay, so 400 BC, the invention of pole dancing came. <laughs> okay. Fascinating. God, Just go ahead and roll me the performance check. I want to see how well you can do this, but I get. I think it's I kind of want to see you eat dirt real bad. <laughs> yeah, this is true. A... True history. This is where pole dancing come from. Now, yeah, this pole is dancing is actually great. Or as they called it, spear dancing in their time. Precisely, <laughs> and it was by yelling performance. So yelling that is a well. 16. The first pole dancer. Uh, a 16 is good enough to get some basic maneuvers down, but as soon as you start trying to experiment with the more intricate stuff, you find yourself slipping. But you don't, you catch yourself, but you know your limits for now. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, what are you doing? Like, nobody knows what this is, by the way. <laughs> I'm trying out the new dance. Oh, I... that looks very good. 
thank you. We had a conversation what is it? A man of culture. Is it? I think. What is it? I'm trying to. Uh, when I was uh, working on the streets, shall we say, I used to have this <laughs> trick where I would dance with this illusion of a snake around me. And I always thought, how could I dance around something that was stiff and uh, a more permanent structure? So I thought, now that I have this spear, I'm not too well in combat with these sorts of things. And it just seemed to be an idea. It, it needs work, I get it. But I think it could be good in the future. I think in some distant future, you can make money with that. But right now, Looking for that sounds of celebration. I, 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 put, I put a drachny down. Oh, it's very good. <laughs> See, the, fir the first instance of making it rain happened on this day <laughs> in ancient Calchas. I'm marking it down. Yeah. All right. Well, okay. Yeah. Manus wants drachny. me. Sure. You can uh, throw a drack me down. Um, let it be known and... that the first man who paid for pole dancing was like 70 was a 30 old man. Yeah. Was Herodotus. <laughs> it's canon now. It's true history. Herodotus, the historian. <laughs> Paid for pole dancing the first <laughs> but Okay, yeah. Uh, following uh, Larkin, the sounds of merriment, enjoyment, conversation alone. It seems all roads lead to one place in town, which is generally the Agora. All Greek cities are sort of structured the same. There is a large open space with shelters and sort of market stalls and people chatting with one another, a forum. There'll be soapboxes there spouting controversial opinions amongst themselves. There'll be people showing fantastic maneuvers from faraway lands, but it all centers around the Agora. Which, to put it in a D and D perspective, it's kind of like a large open area tavern, but outside. Ooh, um, is there any sort of market or bazaar spot that seems to be selling like trinkets and oddities? Um, the, there's a the... few things around. As you scan the area, you see um, a peculiarly dressed two hoplites in sort of a bright orange armor and scale armor, but between them stands a much larger figure, some ten feet tall. This figure, to many of you, looks like a monster. And to call it a monster is not an unapt um, description of this thing. Large and cumbersome, it moves with slow, sort of clumsy movements, but there is an inherent strength that you know that if it touched you, it would knock you flat. This thing is gray of skin, and those who have been to of Africa may have seen it before, large ears and an extremely long nose that seems to dangle down and sway each way. But it is bipedal, standing in full armor, with large ears and a huge trunk, with very wise and old eyes, looking from one person to the next. But it's holding a huge maul in one hand. This thing is huge, and its thick skin is like that of armor itself. Before anyone can say anything, Larkin's going to hold up a hand to the party and go, whatever dark, sad thing you're about to say while staring at this elephant, don't. <laughs> and she's going to go over and just like see how close you can get to this elephant. Sure, yeah. Um, you'll be greeted first by the two soldiers. But it's not all that's there in the uh, in the Agora. There's plenty of stuff around. This thing is taking up the most space, though. Uh, and as you get closer, the two soldiers will stack. One will move to block your path to this insane being. That's wearing the same color armor as them. He'll just put his hand up, and as you try and pass him, he'll say, Welcome, my friend. Are you interested in my friend here? He is very strong, I assure Next. you, in battle. What is that? <laughs> It you is very, very rare in these parts. This is my friend. His name is Thron. He is, as we say, a loxodon. He is a, mm, how you say, an elephant. But like a minotaur is a bull. This man, he is a very wise man, not beast. Do you understand? I believe so. And he pats the loxodon, reaching up to actually just pat his stomach. And this thing is like, imagine... A sort of, I'm going to do the same thing, but if, if yeah. you can stop me, just... <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's not going to stop you. It's like an adolescent elephant standing on its hind legs. That's the sort of size of this thing. It's like a half giant. And he sort of smiles and says, this is the type of thing that Carthage offers. When we ask people to fight for Carthage, you fight alongside the mighty Loxodon, the centerpiece of Carthage's extremely adept military forces. Please take this, and he'll hand you a pamphlet which is put on sort of papyrus, but it's, um, I'll, this is a handout, so you've got to go into roll 20 for this Larkin. Oh man, okay. Um, I'll show it to everybody, I mean. 
Carthage seeks forces for the wars to come. And we ask all who would consider themselves mercenaries or adept with sword to make their way west and join in Nova Carthago with the new forces of Carthage. Believe me, Carthage has this? bountiful lands. And I know Carthage Hold on, has... Sir, sir, oh, please, go ahead. You, you guys see this? Pruitt, I think this is up your alley, perhaps. Yeah, it's see, called see. a loxodon. It's a very smug gnome atop a horse in Roman armor looking at the Loxodon. He's still probably not to his height, but... Uh -huh. <laughs> You're getting, like, handed a, a pamphlet, like, haphazardly. Like, something about soldiers. Yeah, Ling just looks over, yes. realizes this crowd around this Loxodon. Doesn't know it's a Loxodon, and it's just like... And is there a stage or a high vantage point I can get to? <laughs> there will be a forum. So there will be a large pedestal made of marble that looks over all the Agora for people who have political opinions to share those with the masses. Yaling is going to go past and um, kind of... Did I take this? Sorry, I've just got to quickly That's see okay. If we'll get back something. to you. It's pretty Yeah, no worries, no worries. Uh, interacting. So. Yeah. So, yeah, Preywood is just going to turn to Larkin and say, Yes, I have fought with uh, Loxodon before. You, you fought alongside these. I in did not say alongside. Against? <clears throat> Look at, like, now suddenly having the moment of height, <laughs> height differential. Like... Yes. Uh, he's going to, uh, Preywood is going to look right up at the Loxodon, make eye contact. Very big, very dangerous. Very slow and easy to surround. Mm -hmm. And this, the Loxodon looks down at you and he'll notice you have Roman armor on. And he'll just let out a single, very sort of steamy outward exhale along his trunk. But you see from beneath his trunk a sort of knowing and veteran smile spread across his face. But probably you'll be approached when you're standing there as well by one of the soldiers who you would recognize immediately to be of Carthaginian armor, as I believe you fought against Carthage in the past at some point, as you say. Yep. So the <laughs> ah, my friend, you are wearing a Roman armor. Obviously, we have much to discuss. You no longer fight for Rome, I assume. <clears throat> I no longer... Uh... It, has been a long... it has been a while since I fought with Rome. What do you wish to discuss? Well, Carthage is offering its bountiful, plentiful lands to both deserters and veterans and the retired alike, if you are ever interested in coming back into service for the Carthaginian army. You will be you able to I share... Could... What did you say, sir? No, you mean I could get, in addition to my Roman citizenship, I could get some land in Carthage? Ah, my friend, Rome will be Carthage when we are finished with Argos. Oh, as soon as you break out from the uh, surrounding forces, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very wise of you, my friend, to say such a thing. But alas, I, if you, and excuse me with all due respect, I do not hold much weight in your tactical mind. I only have interest in your swordsmanship. I see you there. You have a very nice sword. Would you care to put it to use for a, a country that would reward you aptly for your service? <clears throat> <laughs> I've, I have considered putting it to use again, but this time it would not be for so much the reward as for protection and revenge. Speaking of which, I need to use a soapbox. The city needs to be warned. Uh, what would you say if I told you that there was an invading army approaching the city? Well, I would say, as I say to everybody, if this army... Well, if this land was under the protection of Carthage's army, there would be no worry, for any army trembles before the might of Carthage. Oh, I am sure. And what would you say if the army was not Roman? Would you stay and defend the city? Of course. Against anybody who would attack a Carthaginian force, I am bound to stay and defend. Then you might have an opportunity to prove yourself soon. Eritrea has fallen. There is an army approaching. Ah, but my friend, this is not a Carthaginian city. I uh, would not be able to defend it. Oh, what a shame. I thought that the ideals of Carthage would stretch to protect any land in need. But I see it will have to be I, the simple Romans that takes the deed. My friend, as I much hate to say it, you have the right idea. I will allow Rome to defend this land. And if they are capable, I will say to Rome, well done. 
However, in my mind, I see there is no Roman here, except maybe yourself. So I look forward to seeing you defend this army. Hmm. And pray it will trot off. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll just fold his arms and he'll um, he'll try and offer you a pamphlet before you go. I say pamphlet in the loosest of terms. It is scroll <laughs> scripture atop papyrus. So. It's like a bit of toilet roll. Yeah. Pray will <laughs> grab the the uh, quote unquote pamphlet, quickly scan it for any like indications of military tactics and discard it. Well, do you want to read it? Because I've shared it with the players, but sure, nobody on yeah. the stream can see that. So, <laughs> sure. Okay, is that in Roll20? It is in Roll20. It should be the cool. thing on your screen right now. Attention all those decreed yep. miscreants, uh, criminals, mystios. What's a mystio? And the unwanted. Hey, y'all! Uh, <laughs> Carthage wants us... The Grand Realm of Carthage offers bountiful plump lands for any willing to take up arms in her name. Travel west, blah blah blah, discover your potential. What else is new? We're heroes now. Oreo, mm. diplomat, farmer, whatever it be, Car Carthage will nurture you. Okay, I don't know who else wants this. I'm gonna hand it to Herodotus for his notes. Larkin. Oh, yep. Thank you. Does it have a price on there? Do you want to be a Carthaginian soldier? I'm just thinking if it pays. I thought I, this would pay, but... I overhear you and he'll say, My friends, if you agree to these terms, I am most pleased to offer you ten drachmi each for the travels to Carthage. That should cover the costs, courtesy of a potential new Carthaginian soldier. And where, where will we have uh, to... I'll take the drachmi and go check it out myself. Very well, my friend. Abius, give them the drachmi. They will make their way to Carthage to join the Carthaginian army. She's gonna... Um, Perfect. She's just gonna kind of uh, whisper to Larkin in, in the Yuan-Ti speak. Mm -hmm. I just... I just... Um, <laughs> ah, <laughs> Herodotus was like, oh, ble ah. oh, bless you. <laughs> uh, don't worry, Larkin. I'm not really going to go, but it's ten drag me at the end of the day. But all of you guys here is like, pss, pss, pss. In, in, in response, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> and she also takes the ten drag me. Loxodon looks down at these potential new recruits. She doesn't never says anything, but those old grey eyes and that huge, huge form just shuffle one side to the other. He's not doing much. His own presence is a display enough. This moves with lumbering motions. You are very cool. She says, hmm. patting him on the stomach once more. Just, nice You'll to meet you, Strom. And then he's gonna reach down with his trunk and give you a single pat on the head with his nose, <laughs> like a boot. Mm. Oh, I was just excited about that. <laughs> but yeah, other <laughs> things in the agora. On you. <laughs> other things in the agora that might cause interest is in the very center. There is a sort of small dome-like building atop which there seems to be a golden statue, and indeed seems to be made out of solid gold. And this thing is quite large as well. It's about uh, one to half scale of a human, so almost looks like a um, small human statue. Um, seems to be of a person whose upper half looks like a beard of feathers, but only a small beard of feathers that covers around his chin, like a chin strap of feathers, and then um, two wings that come up from either side of his head, and on his ankles, the same wings, and on his cuffs, the same wings, as it seems to be put in motion. And you don't need a religion role to know that you're looking at a shrine of Hermes. And the shrine yeah. of Hermes has a very particular function in this world that anyone who's native to Greece will know. So, uh, who is anyone here native to Greece? Yes. Yeah, two, right? So, yeah, but you don't remember much, but I'll, I'll let you in because Antigonus is here as well. Um, if there is any messages to be carried, you can count on a shrine of Hermes to have those messages for you. Can I just ask... Is that where the Hermes delivery thing came from? He's the god of messages, so I imagine. That's you know, amazing. Sorry. Go that's on. okay. He's a very pop. He's like, despite just being the messenger of the gods, Hermes commands extreme respect amongst the pantheon. Has worshippers. Um, although he's quite a flippant god, it seems to be quite like a trickstery sort of god, but still commands like enormous respect. And um, his messenger surface is in almost all major Greek cities. You'll find a shrine of Hermes. And if you want to pass a message quickly in Greece, you were earlier asking for an aviary. This is like Greece has no aviary. This is their aviary. Okay. The clerics of Hermes can pass messages between each other, but they're only in major cities. 
Now, that's a bit of telling and not showing you what it is, but I want to make sure because you guys are in Greece that you know how that mechanic works. That's an important mechanic. Having mm -hmm. spent a little bit of time in Athens, would Prey would know that? Yeah, in Athens. And in Rome, you'll have Shrines of Mercury that do the same. Oh, That's perfect. Cool. Would I, I imagine... Must... Yeah, I imagine we'd possibly know about it? There'll be one in Alexandria. There might most likely be one in Memphis. Okay. Would Argos um... have one, though? Would, would home? Uh, Argos, yeah. Argos would have one. Argos is a big city. Can okay. uh, Yelling start making her way to this podium area? Thing yeah, sure. Can? There's a small um, queue, but there's four people. It's almost like clerks at a bank, but they're out in the open. And they're constantly dealing with people. There's a single tiny room. And whenever they talk to one, they retreat into it and they come back with a scroll of paper and hand it to them. Uh, she's going to cast a message to Larkin. Um, I, uh, you up for a, a little bit of fun? <laughs> of, of course. What's the gig? Uh the, uh, as you like to call it, pardon me, excuse me? I let Kylie check her. <laughs> My con list. Yeah, 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 of course. The one you made. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. In the meantime. Da -da -da -da. I'll wait in the queue for the meantime. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give me a moment. But you guys can continue. Braywood's kind of waiting for everybody to catch up. He's waiting expectantly. Sure, you'll find a soapbox, Prewit. Many of them are, excuse me, unoccupied, but you'll have to contend with other people currently expositioning their ideas on politics and things atop other soapboxes. So you'll be able to find an occupied one there. Yeah, he's, he's waiting for some of the party to catch up first, though. He's waiting, okay. he's looking back from his horse. Sure, understood. Uh, rest I, of the party. Well, I'm, pull I'm, I'm not on a horse currently. Okay. I'm pulling Aquilus to the side and saying, uh, so um, you said you wanted to get it on every lip in Greece. Well, how do we spread the message here? What's your, what's your go-to tactic? No, I'm not the most gifted with words. If one of your more fluent members would like, I'm sure the people will listen. But remember, I'll say it in Xenopolis, I'll say it here. Try not to cause a panic. Could destroy right. this town before the army even arrives with a panic alone. I don't know much about this town. Do you know who's in charge? Who would we maybe have an audience with? I do believe it's um Cerides. Cerides of Calchalcus. Got that right. <laughs> Cerides. With an S. Do you know where he resides or she resides? Most likely in his manor. This is a clerici, same as Eritrea. It belongs to Athens. Local leaders, usually in the manor houses. Fair. All right. I'll try to get us there. And as I ride on by the Loxodon, I sort of look at him for a second and start laughing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Prometheus creations get more and more inventive. And I keep riding by. Fortunately, he does not hear you, even with those huge ears. And if he does... Doesn't apply it to himself. Morgan okay. is now grabbing, um, like hooking an arm in Herodotus's and like tugging him along while responding to yelling. Um, do, do you want to help me with something, Herodotus? Oh, of course, my dear. We're just gonna walk around a bit and explore a little while like yelling gets the gets the like I sort get, of. Hey, Basco, who's shopping? I need a pearl. You sure? Wh which way? Um, I need to find the pearls. So, so what it would sell pearls? All right. Well, let's let's find you a pearl and let's ask around. Um, which uh, she would just sort of wait for Yelling's uh, side of the maneuver to begin and start leading Herodotus through the through the crowd. Okay, sure. I'm um, looking for a shop that sells pearls. If Herodotus is looking for one, um, it's easy enough to find out that precious stones like that are found by sailors usually and traded at a extortionate rate, not extortionate against them, to um, more wealthy merchants on the docks. Okay. Yaling, are you doing your thing at this point? Is the area for free, or is well, it...? Well, if you're in the queue, which I believe you are, mm. Yaling? Yeah, I, I just want to be able to get up on, like, a high point. Oh, right. Sorry, wait, you're not in the queue for the shrine, then? 
Oh, no, 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 no. Right, okay, yeah. You can get to the forum if you want, yeah. The forum is like a podium. Yeah, Pruitt yeah. Yeah. is waiting by a soapbox, so... Yeah. yeah. Like, um... I, I think we should all defer to kind of like Prayer at this point, because he's been waiting. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who yeah. approaches Pruitt should be, I guess, the question. <laughs> Kara, If well, anyone. Yeah. Tara. Well, I think our diplomats should... If, if Yarling sees Pruitt by the soapboxes, because if she's trying to get to a high point... Um, mm -hmm. I uh, imagine you want to share the news. Uh, Prabhu gets down from his horse. Uh, yes. Uh, Yarling has uh, one better with words. I was wondering if you, or perhaps Antigonus with his armor, should do it. My stature and my Roman armor might uh, be the, the best of me this time. I, uh, I'm not very good at keeping people... Uh, Calm, shall we say. I'm not one to sugarcoat things. Uh, but I'd be willing to get you a little bit more of an audience. I feel like you may struggle to get your voice heard. If I uh, draw attention to you, stop the performance and give you some time to talk. Um, that would be useful. And maybe just dance around you if you get onto a high enough point, just mm -hmm. so people are paying attention. Yes, uh, I struggled to think of the occasion where a dance would be uh, appropriate, but if you feel that it would be, uh, as I announce the death of the city of Eritrea, then I by don't, all means. I don't say I'm saying... Just to draw attention so you can make the announcement. Yes. Uh, Kara, I know that the druids, they command their presence in Gaul. Would, you, would this be, your, would this no. be an opportunity for you? No. Not at all. I'm people don't like to listen to me. I, I, Antigonus is from Greece. Perhaps a, a more familiar face would help. Antigonus, you're very imposing with your armor. You command a presence. Well, I, I certainly would stick my neck out for any purpose, but I actually think this is a, not the idea. As Aquilus says, causing a panic can cause more problems than it actually solves. Perhaps going straight to the source, he mentioned a man, uh, Cerides of Chalkus. We find his manner, we give the message. The message disseminates through a much better means than just stirring up a crowd. And you see Prewitt just visually <laughs> getting, uh, being relieved <laughs> at the, mm. the prospect of not having to stand up on a soapbox as a gnome. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yes, Plus that sounds I'm, like a better plan. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm loud, but I'm pretty ugly, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, and I pat, I pat horse or donkey the horse on the head, and then sort of <laughs> lead on toward the uh, other end of town, um, looking for any nice manners, anything that looks like a nicer part of town or a bigger mansion or something. Yeah, sure. Uh, but we'll just quickly cut to anyone else in the agora who wants to do anything, because there's still other stuff around the agora, of course. But um, depends how long you spend there. We uh, Herodotus, oh, Herodotus is being like pulled around through the crowd. Okay. By which I'm also trying to like, pun me, excuse me, and I'm like bump into people with an old man and like, I don't know, pluck some goodies, okay. like trinkets or otherwise, while we look for, um, uh, do you know where we can buy pearls? Okay, thank you. Pearls, anyone? And just kind of make my way around. Yeah, all right, let's say that uh, side of hand check then, please. <laughs> for that, as you bump along people. With modifier, pardon me, just a moment. Side of hand, that's uh -huh. five. That's going to be a, this is a 16. 16, okay. Um, you don't really get your hands on much coins, but certain little valuable trinkets, things that be in people's pockets, usually like linty stuff. But, um, you know, okay. you get around like 10 drachmi, I'd say, over the course of doing this. Not many people carry it on them. Okay. I just, yeah, any, anything like shiny, like some, somebody had a dagger or anything like that, sure. but gold, gold is fine too. And ultimately, we're looking for like that pearl shop, and what like, sort of simultaneously getting in the direction of what he needs. All right, and as you're making your way through the agora, you'll see a young boy waving some more papyrus around in his hand, simply shouting the words "Prometheus bound, Prometheus bound, live in Athens," and uh, but he'll make his way past through the party unless anyone stops. Uh oh. Uh, <laughs> this. So wait, and this is this is Larkin and Herodotus is passing through, or is it passing through all of us? 
Uh, he's just making his way around the Agora, uh, constantly handing out bits of papyrus to people. Yeah, absolutely. When I hear that, the, the horse <laughs> buckles up. And... <laughs> Boy. <laughs> Boy. Yes, sir. Yes, what sir. Is what What's, is it? This, this is Prometheus Bound, sir. A new production. Prometheus been bound for centuries. What do you mean? Ah, oh, right. <laughs> of course. You don't know. That's fine. Let me explain. Prometheus Bound is Aeschylus's new production in Greece, in Athens. As you know, as you know, Aeschylus, of course. Yeah, well, yeah, the Athenian priest would never shut up about the playwright. Some <laughs> fat in Greece, I understand. Yeah, a tragedy, a grand tragedy. Aeschylus's finest work—that's what they're saying. Tells the story of Prometheus. <laughs> they're just allowing that to be shown around these days. Well, Aeschylus—he's a very powerful man. He's got a lot of respect, believe me. They've tried to shut it down, but that's the major selling point about the play. It's a controversial a one. Right. Oh, How do I get a ticket? Got to go to Athens. And then... Of course. Amphitheater there, plenty will be showing it. I've heard it's very favorable towards Prometheus. Much the scandal Indeed. that Aeschylus faces. As it should be. Can I have that pamphlet you're giving out? Of course, of course. Please, take two, and he'll hand you two of them. Um, take a friend. Aeschylus will surely be pleased. Sure, I'll give him a gold for his trouble. Ah, thank you. But there's really no need. I bet he'll pocket it anyway. Yeah, blessings of Prometheus upon you. <laughs> and Zeus to you, my friend, and Zeus to you. And uh... <laughs> My cheerful, his, digging his cheerful face just suddenly, like, it was very sour. <laughs> taking his rolls initiative, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Which I hadn't given him that damn gold now. Steering <laughs> smite. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's going on. So, um, let's see. Uh, Car, is there anything you should be doing in the Agora? I was with Prewit and Oh, right. And okay. Guinness, yeah, so. the four of us are headed towards, uh, I forget his name. <laughs> oh, Cerides. Yeah. Trying to find him. Well, we might have to ask around at some point, but yeah. Okay, sure. Um, yeah, uh, it's actually quite easy to find. It's the only building that's got several layers and sort of vines hanging from the sides of the buildings. Seems to be like extremely green around the top layer. But it's got an extra story on from most of the already quite nice buildings surrounding it. And it's one of the only buildings that you'll see that's got guards placed around the perimeter of the gardens that sort of um, frame the building, envelop it. Yeah, well, that is a building. <laughs> I was just going to say, Yelling would have uh, waited back in the square for when they come back to do the speech thing, so she'll probably just stop performing for Larkin. Stop oh, I don't, I, Larkin, or stop. I think she's trying to give me some advantage yeah. on, our, on our perusing. Okay. Um, meanwhile, while we're walking and sort of in doing that in tandem, um, Herodotus, what, what's what's the pearl for, anyway? Oh, it's it's for a magic spell. I'm a powerful wizard, you know. So you mentioned um, what what kind what kind of spell? I mean, I, I only know a little bit of magic, and the, the mage hand pops up. There's a little doo -doo -doo, like has oh. some gold in it and goes back into her pocket. Well, you, you, you know the small boy that's with us. The <laughs> pray with. Oh, oh, that isn't it? Oh, yes. <laughs> um. Well, he's got a magical sword, and I was going to tell him what it was. He, he, what, has he always had one? Or did... Oh, no, he found it. Where? Well, when? Where, we, where we've just been, of oh. course. Oh! Oh, that was the thing he was holding back in the right tray. No, you can, you can tell what they are. And then, for a moment, her eyes do the uh, sort of detect magic-y um, glimmer to them as well. She goes... I can do the same thing, you know. All oh, right. Are you casting the same magic? Um, at will. The, the invocation, yeah. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. It's overwhelming. There is a giant pulse of magic at this point. It okay. is almost so much that if you imagine it visually, it overcomes your eyes as a sort of foggy haze looking around. But it's all centered. If you imagine looking close to the proximity of the sun, you can see it shine, brightening off things. But when you look directly at it, you have to shield your eyes. It's all centered around, not on Herodotus, not on Prewit, but on you, Larkin. 
on your box currently, it's setting out a pulse. Not a singular large, not a singular amount of like a uh, magic, but rather just a heartbeat of it, pulsing and dragging. And you, even now, as you look at it, you begin to sort of adapt yourself towards the drag it's got on you, so that you stop to ignore it almost. But as soon as you become aware that it's magical again, you can start to feel it weighing heavier on you, feeling as though it's pulling itself in one direction. Interesting. Okay, so as she's sort of saying that to Herodotus, like, I can do that. Like, this suddenly, as if squinting at the, the, the sun. I wouldn't, Are you I wouldn't okay? do that right now. Yeah, just... Can we go, can we go this way for a moment? Um, and start... Is that where the shop is? I'm not sure. I just have a, a funny, a funny sense. Um, and like, it'll, she'll turn it off. Just, sure. um... Have you got something and... in your eye? No, 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 I think I'm all right. Just dust, maybe magic dust. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, magical and, uh, dust. I didn't think of magical dust. Write, write that one down, and just sort of casually leading him in the whatever direction this seems to be pulling me, as long as it's not too far from um, where I can see y'all. Who she might just see us walking away. Oh, you're actually going to follow the pull. Mm-hmm. Okay, sure. It's um, definitely leading me in a direct um, direction. It's it's very specific. As though if you try and turn left or right at any point, they always like give you a good sense of where it wants to go. If you can imagine like gravity being specific to this one item, as though like it's like if, if a compass pulled you in a direction. Well, yeah, it's falling to a different direction as other than all things on Earth, and it's how it feels, just in its own weight alone. But it's definitely dragging. But it leads you towards the bridge. Eventually, it comes towards the bridge. Uh, and it's a quite a, an amazing sight, which you've seen before as you crashed on feet. But um, effectively, it is a, a large statue of a man with his feet in the ocean. And atop his shoulders, he is holding a flat cobblestone bridge, which crosses from one arm to the other across the back of his neck, which he's leaned over and across his left arm into mainland Greece. And on it now, you can see several people queuing to pass and things. But um, it looks fairly clear. Okay, so it's just sort of just stop there um, when, once sort of the, the bridge is in sight and just mm-hmm. curiously, like, Oh, that's wonder. impressive. Yeah. Have you, you... You've seen this before, haven't you? You must have. Oh, of course, it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, all right, I, I just... Sorry, I just, I guess, needed to take a look over here. We can we can go back to your, your pearl, it's all right. Mm. And then I'll um, just... Have a wearily glance over her shoulder, like looking for anything that might be indicative of why she's being pulled in that direction. Um, Take a but then... check. Are you okay, my dear? Just, um, I think so. I just, just feel strange, I guess. Uh, perception being uh, 15. 15, yeah, don't see anything that might this box be pointing to. Hard to okay. see. You ever just feel like. You're meant to go in a direction, Herodotus. Uh-huh. Like, you can't help it. Herodotus will put his hand straight on her forehead and try and do a medicine check. <laughs> All right, roll medicine. <laughs> Rolls a five, which is an eight. Oh, you've oh, yeah. got a fever coming, my dear. <laughs> do, do I? Do I have a fever? <laughs> I'm having a fever dream here, Harry. Diagnose her with the plague. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> She'll be gone come nightfall. <laughs> I don't know how to tell you this, Larkin, but you're dead. <laughs> you seem a bit under the weather, girl. But all right, returning to the rest of you, going to this um, the manner of Cyrides. Um, so there'll be guards at the front entrance, of course, and not many people have been made entrance to see the leader of Chalcus. And as you get closer, they'll cross spears. Whether or not you're planning to go in or not, they'll still cross spears if you walk close to them. <clears throat> we have uh, news from Eritrea. One of them will look to the other. And um, that alone will let them part spears. Just you. None of your Me? friends. I look back towards Antigonus and Kara. One of you. Uh, as One he looks of back, you. I'm going to um, grab my holy symbol and say a quick little prayer touch you and say Prometheus is with you friend speak well for us 
You've got you've got guidance now. A one d four on a skill check. Nice. Hmm. Cool. Very well. It seems a Roman will indeed save Greece. I pray what says softly, and I'll turn back and head into the building. All right. Entering the building, it's a very lavish display that you see. Several uh, servants and slaves sort of mill about carrying plates of um, fruit and different sort of cleaned vases and stuff and carrying rugs, put them in different places as you make your way through. A large open space, a sort of courtyard in the center of the manor, but all around you in a square around you up to the sky, you see three stories of what must be quite an extravagant home. Uh, do I see... Anyone I can ask directions from, or is there clearly yeah, a place I can go to? There's plenty of people milling around, so you can ask any of them you want. The um, slave Miss... servants. Uh, yes. Uh, which way is... Uh, uh, I'm going to need the name one more time. Was it Ferricides? Cerides. Cerides. Which, uh, where can I talk to Cerides? I wish it was Ferricides. That would be an interesting uh, <laughs> turn to the campaign. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah okay. okay. Um... She says, ah, uh, the master, he's usually on the top floor in his study. Um, you're allowed in here? You've been let in? or? Yes, I have news from Eritrea. Uh, where, yes. where is the room exactly? Uh, your top floor, you can't miss it. It's the only room up there. And he'll make his way towards some stairs. Uh, what is the general appearance of, I don't know, the rooms and whatnot? Uh, very well um, dusted and things. So like each one has a nice rug that's been placed along the bottom of it. Um, yeah. So a lit torches in each sconce. Um, Does it seem like, okay, is there any indications of, I don't know, battle experience, or does it seem like the house of a softy? Okay, fair enough. That's an interesting <laughs> um, idea. Roll an insight check on a building. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> is this a softy house? Ooh, there we yeah. go. 21. <laughs> it's about as soft as the houses come, yeah. Fine, okay, yeah. like, you'll see bottles of, like, fine perfume. Um, you'll see, like, very cushionable sofas. Um, his bed that you pass is of the finest, pure cushion. This is the type of bed the cat was after, is what you... <laughs> but, you know, it's, like, the most luxury. But there is no signs of any cross swords. There's no signs of any battle memorabilia. There's yeah. no signs of any mannequins with armor. It's just a pure house full of perfume, finery, and hedonism. Mm. Yeah, pray would snap, please. He, but yeah, he's going to go to the third floor. All right. Uh, you come across to a door that is quite well made, well constructed, with a large gold knocker of a lion engraved in the center of it. Is there a knocker? Yeah, there is, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You'll hear a very soft noise from inside that you can only perceive to be the very the slightly muttered word of enter. Does the door go in or out? I mean, it yeah, goes, he'll, he'll go in. in. It goes inwards, yeah. Sure. Yeah. And it's a, it's a, just a uh, very well-constructed study. There's a large, large oaken table upon which there are several parchments and notes spread in an organized manner. Many quills and sort of different ways of writing on papyrus are scattered around. Uh, and he himself sits on the far side of it, looking towards the door. As he looks up from beneath some uh, papyrus at you, pray with Um... Who has let you in here? The gods. Uh, you are Cerides, then? I am, but you have me at a disadvantage, my good short friend. Who are you? Prewit Romain, at your service. I am are a, you? a veteran of Rome, but I have specific business here. You have not had contact with Eritrea in a while, have you not? I've been worrying a little about Eritrea. I can't say I'm a big fan of the city. I assumed that it had probably been overtaken by bandits of some sort. They held that ridiculous festival, welcomed themselves into dangerous situations. Why, do you have news? I yes. pray share it. <clears throat> well, it is uh, not far off from what you said. The city was attacked, not by bandits, by an army of... Uh, dead men crazed by necromancy and it was completely demolished there's no one alive i escaped with my companions we are the only ones left it is possible that the army will arrive here i hope you have the experience to fend it off you believe an army of dead an army of dead men yes have you heard of the seven mages 
Do you mean the Seven Sages? Yes. Yes, I've heard of the Seven Sages. Everybody's Did you know heard. about the Eight that there was going to be? Ah, yes, of course. Little old tale that people tell their children to scare them. Yes, well, a little old tale has eliminated the city of Eritrea. These are some very bold statements, my friend. Please tell me, did you partake in much wine in your staying in Eritrea? I see you do not respect a man of military experience, but the lack of communication from the city speaks for itself. You will not receive any messages from Eritrea. There will be no one from it that arrives in the city because it is gone. They are all dead. He'll just lean in across the table and he'll say a single word. Good. Town has been a pox on the island for longer than I can remember. And if anyone's deemed it necessary to wipe it clean of the map, I wish I could be the one to present them with a merit myself. <sighs> if you want to go to your sordid little hero festival in Eritrea, you're welcome to go back. You can have the town for all I care. Useless little place, much above its station. Well, I will await with glee, glee then when the army from Eritrea arrives here. Good day, mm -hmm. and pray we will leave. We will stand ready. He'll be his last words before you leave, but he won't try and stop you. Yeah. Pray is fierce. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. I did not expect that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you. I think I've mentioned it. I'm not sure that these two towns have were in a pretty vicious war with one another in the past. Yeah, right. So they're not, they're not huge fans of each other. Yeah. So you guys await Preywood's arrival, and it's not very long. It's like 15 minutes at most. He's already back down, exiting the building. He's just he, he's pissed. And uh, as he exits the door and goes past the guards, you'll just hear him muttering under his breath, stupid Greeks, selfish, stupid, unorganized, a pox on society. <laughs> <laughs> so I take it that went well? Well, they would be defending themselves at least. You know, there's an army. But uh, he was happy that the city was destroyed. It was their rival. <clears throat> Men serve other beings other than other men causes problems everywhere, doesn't it? Huh. Who are you to speak? You worship a titan. I worship the titan that tried to defeat all the others. There's a bit of irony there, I understand, but at least he stands for something, making men more powerful, giving us the gifts that the gods with withhold from us. I respect you, Antigonus, but I'm not sold on your religion. That Give it time. Point. Indeed. Hey, okay, rest of the party, what's going on in good old Chalkis? Uh, I think, I think you know, um, and I are walking back towards wherever we left yelling and the rest of the party. Okay. Um, sort of lost track of where everyone is now, but I think it's safe to say everyone's making it back to the Agora or not. Is anyone not doing that? Has anyone got anything totally specific in mind that they want to do? If so, speak up, because... I do want to go and buy a pearl, but I know we've got party funds that I would need to go and get first. Sure thing. I'm, and you're all meeting got... funds. Oh, you've got funds, okay. All right. So as the um, party's in the centre of the Agora, um, the Hermes Shrine's lines seem to dissipate as it's drawing towards the later of the day now, uh, around 2 p.m. or so, with this all those things being done. Um, and one of the attendants catches your gaze, Herodotus, as you walk by, uh, and the party, in fact, saying, um, anybody looking for messages from Shrine of Hermes? Nobody? Or... Oh, actually, the, the, as if the idea just hit. Um, can I... Do you have any message from, from Argos, or can I, can I send one? Not quite how it works, my dear. You need to tell me your name. And he's going to cast b -b 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 a spell on you, Larkin, in the area right above his pedestal that walks. You'll see a small raised marble square between where you, where you, like, right before where he speaks to you, from behind a small sort of, sort of sepulchre podium type thing. But... um. He'll cast a spell on you, and you need to make me a, do, 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 I think, a wisdom saving throw. 
would I know if actually if these cost? Oh my god. What's the cost? Just, oh, sorry, charisma saving throw. Charisma saving throw. Oh no, I can't really see that focus. But um, can I do plus, an arcana plus, check? Plus six, so seven. Yeah, you do an arcana check if you want. God damn it! I'm rolling 20, really bad on the saves today. Twenty-five. Seven. 25. Okay, so you got a 7 and it was a 25 on the other thing. So yeah, the spell goes off and it's cast around you. You know this, you heard, you've heard seen these shrines before. In order for people to verify that the message they're receiving is theirs, everyone gets a zone of truth cast on them. Okay. And as this zone of truth goes off around you, Larkin, he'll just say, tell me the name you were given when you were born. Larkin. Larkin, is that all? Or I gave it to myself. Very well, very well. That should suffice. And uh, with that, he'll uh, retreat into his shrine. for, And he'll come out like four or five minutes later of you standing there waiting, if you do wait for that long. I mean, I, yeah, now I'm sort of infested. Uh-huh. While it's waiting, and, I'm uh, like, are you sure you're okay, girl? I'm under, the, under the zone of truth. <laughs> <laughs> Admittedly, no, I'm, I'm quite con- concerned. Remy, how you answer the zone of truth is your prerogative as long as it's truth doesn't have to no, be the question. I, I, I'm concerned like she's concerned like I, I I'm not really sure right now I wonder if she's not doing it because she knows she's she's under his own truth he's just doing it you know all right so Larkin coming out he has two scrolls in his hands <clears throat> and he says ah you're in luck Miss Larkin two messages from Argos over the past few days uh addressed to either yourself or a yarling yeah, yeah, of course. Um, are, any, are any of them in like sight at this point as I'm receiving these? Like, uh, well, yeah, I was going to say, Yarling's probably just setting up prep for when she's going to perform so Pruick and talk to the crowd. Um, so whether I don't know whether she'd be in sight or not. Up to you. If you're within, if you're within earshot or not, that's your I'd prerogative. Say, I'd say I'm in earshot. I hear my name. If, okay, if, okay. if, I, if I see her, like just be like, um, wave. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take. Those when? So he hands you one yeah. rolled up scroll of papyrus for you to read. This was the first to come, came around three days ago. And if you're going to read it, it is in roll 20 for you to see alone. Oh, you goodness. read it out loud if you like, or you can read it privately. Can Yaling look over her shoulder, or is it like <laughs> a. Make me a slide of eye check. I don't know. I mean, like, a slide of eye check. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's up to, like, if I don't know if it's contested or if Cause... you're letting her read it too. Because Yarling can, she'll probably go like, that's me, when she hears her name or something. Well, yeah, I mean, he's not going to stop anyone reading it. That's now in Larkin's possession, so. I, I can see from Larkin's face she's reading it in person. But like... <laughs> Yeah, hold, give, me a, uh, give me a moment. Um, um, so, uh, yeah, as, as so Herodotus on one arm and as Yarling shows up and looks over her shoulder, she just is reading this paper looking thoroughly, like, perplexed. That's okay, because Larkin, you speak these can, right? I do. Oh, and I, I get I get the sense of what's happening here. Um, mm-hmm. But... Oh, what's it say, girl? Dunno. Can you mm-hmm. read it? And I'm going to see if... If he can. <laughs> can you okay. read him? Oh, okay. Yeah, um, I, I know you can. I just, I'm curious if Herodotus can. I've put it in Herodotus's... On roll twenty, you should be able to see that Herodotus now. You say it's in. I can't, but okay. I'm going to show it to everybody because it's a tiny yeah. thing. Yeah, just. You say just... it was in Thieves' Can. Yep, it's in Thieves' Can. Well, I mean, you don't know that actually. It just, yeah. But I, I'll read it if no one wants to read it because it's pretty, it being a bit unfair to the viewers if we just dance right, around the back. Um, Narkil, a fledgling sparrow nested in my window today. He brought poems and a broken vase. We laughed and stared at the stars for you. Olet helped him fix his wagon. Es- expect a sparrow on your window from a haslet. <laughs> oh, that's very confusing. Well, right. Only two people in the party knows what it means. And Larkin I... and Dowling, you two would. I'm just going to translate it for you two. I'm not going to bother having to make it private or something. Yeah, I was like, wait, I meant to know what that means. I was like, yeah, right. sure. <laughs> obviously, I, obviously, I've executed this in a way that wasn't clear, but okay. Um, I think I understand, Harry, for yeah, what it's worth. Sure. Um, when thieves can't use the first and second, uh, the first and the last words, letters are switched around. So Narkil is Larkin. Um, a fledgling sparrow nested by my window today means I was visited by a relative of yours. He brought poems in a broken vase means that he was very uh, welcoming and he brought gifts. 
We laughed and stared at the stars for you means he was asking about what you were doing and where you were going. Olek helped him fix his wagon. Same, um... Cleo. Same, yep, Cleo helped him fix his wagon means Cleo has gone with him. Um, expect a sparrow on your window means expect to be visited by a relative soon. From a haslip, which, using the same logic, is, um... Yep. Okay, so I, I guess it'd be a pretty quick see if he can read it in the minute. He's like, oh, that's confusing. She's it sort of starts to process what that what's effectively the ma- I should have made oh. a translated one. So no, you're you're, you're all right. Um, Yarling, your brother. No, sorry, Larkin, your brother has visited um, Argus and has charmed um, Thestia into speaking with him, and he's taken Cleo with him as he searches you out and she's told him where you are. Oh, I, I understand, I understand. But so Larkin sort of is jokingly asks if he can read it, is curious. And then yeah. when she realizes like, wait, 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 what did that say? Um, wide-eyed sort of hands it to yelling. It's like, I, um, I don't have family. I mean, I mean, of course. Can I insight check that? Oh, it's probably a poet and he didn't know it. <laughs> you wanted to insight check Yaling? I mean, Larkin? Well, yeah, because like, I'm, <laughs> if she's like a relative, thing. she's thinking... Who knows? Yeah, you can insight check her if you want. It. Um, and I guess it's uncontested because if it is, you've got a deception check. But... It's a zone of truth, though, right? Oh, it's true. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm genuinely. So not. that's an 18 on insight. No, she's okay. she's concerned and isn't lying. She's not sure who it would be in terms of relatives because you're her only relatives, you know, family. Okay. So it's like who who has Cleo is sort of the concern on her face. Why did? You... Um, excuse me, but I'm sorry. Th- there was another message for you. Also, came two days ago. Oh, now I'm rapidly concerned, grabbing this next paper. Okay, and I'm going to skip the cloak and dagger yep. this time and say, please read it aloud. Um, Harkin, Yaling, I have been tricked. Foul magics have weakened my resolve. I told a stranger everything about you. He comes for you now. He is dangerous and he has taken Cleo. I know what to do. I need you to turn to Argus immediately. Foul things are happening here and more of us are disappearing every day. Aslia. There's while standing there with Herodotus, just like, like, goes white essentially, just with the panic on her expression. Uh, oh, oh, it's definitely, it's definitely that fever. Yarling mm. just looks over at Larkin, who I, I assume just been reading over her shoulder. Mm. L- Larkin, we've we've got to go home. We've got to go now. So, are you sure we can't send messages from? How quickly? It all depends on when they check the shrine. I don't we think can send that's... them immediately, but if they're not there to receive, that could be days. She just brushes past him and is like pulling Herodotus with her and is like, "Oh, I, I wanted to see if that. I had any messages." Looking for the others and the horses, just sure. sort of like oh, in a frenzy. You can step up as well, Herodotus, as these yeah. two back off. Okay, right. cast a new truth on you, um, which is a charisma saving throw, and asks uh, the name. Yes. What is the name you were you were born with? Uh, Herodotus. Herodotus. I'll be right back and check the messages for you. And he's gone. He's gone a bit longer. So while Larkin and Yaling are sort of scrambling around, he's gone for like 10 minutes. Comes back to you, uh, Herodotus. Um, Mr. Her- you won't say Mr. Herodotus. Uh, yes. Um, we have quite an anomaly here. And I say this in the kindest of words, but in this situation, you need to have an acolyte of Hermes on your personal retinue. We don't cater to this kind of volume. You have 1,392 messages waiting, Herodotus. <laughs> oh, oh dear. Well, C- well, could you start from the beginning? We don't provide that type of service. I've done you a favour and I've taken two. Your oh. answer phone is full. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't empty your voicemail, Herodotus? <laughs> oh. Now, usually... When I assume you're kind of a diplomat of some regard, you should hire your own acolyte of Hermes, good sir. We don't cater to listing off this many messages when you come to the shrine. There are other people here ready to receive their one message while you wait for your 1,392. 
is, is that a new record? You don't keep records in terms of how many people have got the most messages. Regardless, take these two scrolls, they're yours, and be on your way. Oh, oh, thank you, sir. The rest are available to you, but only if you go to the main shrine, the Temple of Hermes in Athens. Okay. All right, so you receive two scrolls there, Herodotus. Um, the first one, which I'll read aloud, because you know, I might as well do it. So, um, Herodotus, I must meet you. You are so fascinating. I can't believe there's an entire world across the sea. Athena has truly blessed you with the wisdom most profound. I live in Athens, and I've begun my studies. I wish to follow your example and travel the world from Theogenes. Uh, and... Believe me, there's a lot of this fan mail to go through. So. <laughs> um, but okay, this one here uh, takes your fancy, the second message you've given. Um, Herodotus, old friend, you're causing me great concern. I have not seen hide nor hair of you in months. Do I address this message to Elysium where you rest, or are you still shuffling around on our level? You still owe me 200 drachmi. May Zeus guide your steps if you are still out there. Make sure those step lead, steps lead back to Athens. Yours, Hippocrates. Oh, what's that name again? Mm -hmm. uh, can you can I keep that somehow? Yeah, yeah, these are written on papyrus. Yeah. I love that you have so much fan mail. Yeah, <laughs> it does Yeah, okay. All right, so what's going on, Yarling and Larkin? As you got this news? Oh, I'm scrambling for our horses. Yarling just anything that she had like set up, she just quickly unpacked grabbed all their stuff, um, is just putting it all on her horse, just strapping it all on, and just constantly making eye contact with Larkin, just of both, just just, just this horrific face of just shock. And she, for once, Yarling is kind of speechless. <laughs> I, I imagine the sort of the expression of like, you, you both just, um, like two people going to like a hotel when you've just seen something horrible, it's like, quick, we need to pack up and get out of here. And like, you're like, you got that thing. I got this thing. In, in sync, scrambling to get our get our shit and go. Hopefully, catching the sight of any of our buddies, but they would they would see sort of um a, yeah, an urgency. We come, we come through the the uh, the square, and I have your horse. I just keep taking care of it for you. Um, and we come back to the middle of the square, and I flag you down. Um, our meeting didn't go as well as we'd hoped. These people are. Well, they're sort of prepared. Good, good, great. Um, I know none of our personal concerns are probably as important to the rest of you as they are to us, but um, we we have just sort of struggling for her word and speech just, just looks to yelling and just doesn't know how to sort of explain the situation. We need to go home. Yeah. Now. Now. Family emergency. We have to go. I'm sorry. All right, um, Larkin. At this point, your box is beginning to get heavier and heavier, and it's not long—no longer just a pull. It's a full-on tug, as though you're having to pull it like in the right. When you're not moving towards mainland Greece, you're having to move it, like have to pull it backwards, as though it—the density of it seems much ha like heavier than it was before. So is it physically weighing like the, the sling down? Yeah, like I'm saying, it's the same size, but the mass of the thing is just, you know. It's if I like reach pulling. reach back to sort of um, acknowledge it and like, I guess I guess sort of not quite open it to in invoke any power from it, but mm -hmm. just interact with it in any way. Does it does it give any feedback? It doesn't seem to do anything. It just seems to be pulling at you, and heavy. If it would make any difference, uh, Greece needs us more than ever. If you have any concern for the people here, they will not find help in this city. I understand, but family comes first, I'm sure. You're welcome to come. I just... Does the box seem to be pulling t towards um, home? Yeah, in that general direction. That works. <laughs> Look, I'm sure me and Larkin are fine to continue being heroes, but right now we're going home. <laughs> yeah, this, is, this may be one of the most stupidest things I've ever said, but you are welcome to come with us. But... Until we've gone home, we can't continue any further. I'm sorry. And she'll just start, like, straddling her horse. Okay, party, how are we responding to this? 
I mean, there's Just definitely some confusion. confusion. <laughs> yeah, definitely confusion. And I'll take I, it they're going to be heading across the bridge. We're going that direction anyway, so... You're going towards the bridge? Yeah. Well, that's going to be the next city, isn't it? To warn the next city. It's the only way to get across the mainland Greece, unless you mm -hmm. want to take a boat. I'll, I'll hand Prewit the um, the notes, because at this point I don't need them. Um, I, I, I don't care to translate, but it means trouble. And she'll give him that to look at. Um... Yeah, and then start so like in the same direction for a, for at least a little while. Is we need anything else in this city, Aquilus? Can we move? Oh, Aquilus says, um, well, Aquilus, he, yeah, yeah. I thought you said sorry. I thought you said Antigonus, and I was like, wait, he's Antigonus. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Aquilus. Um, Aquilus will say, um, Chalcus is a jealous, horrible city. There's nothing much here, other than the statue and the bridge, which many people travel to see. There's nothing much. In Chalcus. Larkin, Yarling, uh, accompany us at least to Athens. Maybe from there you can get the boat to Greece. Whatever we're doing, as long as we're heading towards home. And before, she, like, see, seeing Aquilus, sure, dig into her pocket for, like a piece of rubble from the, the temple in Eritrea and sort of go over and like place it in his palm. I was hoping to hold on to this, but perhaps it, it'll serve you better. Good luck getting to Athens if you're coming with us or otherwise, but um, she'll hand him that and then go start tugging on her horse towards the bridge. If you guys are coming, please just hurry. Fair. Uh, give me one moment. And I run up to the Hermes statue, knowing how this works, and sort of say, anything for Antigonus? I doubt it, but I just wanted to check. Cast a zone of truth on you, which I assume is on, um, non non-contested. Or... I, I non-contested, yeah. Yeah, we asked your name, what name you were given when you were born. Antigonus, the only one I know. Okay, he'll uh, go into the shrine. He'll come out and say, I'm afraid there's nothing for you, my friend. Yeah, didn't. Thought that would. Okay, bye. This is a big Oh, I didn't get a pearl. What do you need a pearl him. for? Oh, oh, you wanted to know what your weapon was. And that will help? Of course. Do we have time? Larkin? It's... You can make it quick. Is Yannick there like just looks at Larkin shaking her head, finding a pearl just in looks short, exasperated, in short. like doesn't know what to do. Yeah, is there somebody selling pearls within thirty feet? <laughs> the answer is no. Okay. <laughs> oh, we <laughs> could just get as, one as later. <laughs> yeah, finding a pearl salesman this short time limit is going to be very, very difficult. Uh, roll me investigation check and roll high. Natural okay. twenty. <laughs> Oh, so, actually, yeah, uh, which will be investigation 26. <laughs> All right, there is a guy passing you saying, Pearls for sale, pearls, hell. <laughs> oh, shit, <laughs> pearls. How much? It's uh, 100 drachmi, friend. One pearl, 100 drachmi each. I have 90. Deal. <laughs> he'll, he'll just uh, instantly, like, toss you a pearl. Um, yeah. Hold his hand out for the drachmi. Okay, so party funds just... Went down to a fourth of what they were, but you know. <laughs> 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 Pleasure, doing the home. Pleasure doing business with you, sir. Oh, pearls, huh? Yeah. And he'll just continue on selling his pearls. <laughs> <laughs> miracle of a nat 20 happens. So there we go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> as soon as you said pearls, this guy's like, okay, whatever. <laughs> Great. Uh, we're waving. <laughs> okay, yeah, and we're off towards the bridge, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Sure. And at this point in the day, although it was crowded early, the bridge seems quite, um, not deserted now, but like a lot of less people around, easy enough to cross. Um, and as soon as you get to the bridge, sort of like, um, as I've mentioned a few times, that it's like a statue that's holding a bridge on its shoulders. And the bridge sort of, when it gets to its very arch of its back, it just bends upwards and goes over him. Uh, almost so you can't see the other side of the bridge. But as soon as you're crossing, you will see on the other side of the bridge, a um, single other traveller coming in the opposite direction. And with him, a small girl. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, no. My music, it's gone. Oh, it's got yeah. ominous real quick. <laughs> Crossing from the oh, other sorry. side of the bridge. Sorry, go ahead. Is the bridge this. wide enough for horses? Or, yeah. But, but why don't I just put you on a battle map, guys? Awesome. Well, why would you put us on a battle map? Oh, who knows? <laughs> for fun. Strange detail for just a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> you can all see this, right? Mm-hmm. Cool. So, on the other side of the bridge, you see a man draped in fully white robes, but 
from cusping from underneath the white robes, there is soft velvet covering all parts of his skin. From with gloves right down to the wrists, traveling along his arms, on either hand, all the way up to covering his neck in a large sort of collar, over of which is sort of like a pharaoh's crown, which comes down either side of his head. But across his face is the most interesting factor about him. A gold mask with a single visage, a visage of disdain and cold command. As he looks across the bridge, or you assume he looks across the bridge, with one hand on the shoulder of what you recognize to be Cleo of Argos. I, I recognize this figure. I reckon, do I recognize the mask? Um, I can try and roll a history check if you want. As he sees you coming across the bridge. Yeah, I don't no. know if I recognize this. You can try. Um, as he sees you coming across the bridge, he puts a hand on a single dagger from his belt, which is made of solid gold, it looks like. Okay, for history, that is a 22. <laughs> Thank you, Larkin. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. um, nothing. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, 22. <laughs> sorry, was it? All right. Seems to be one uh, a mask similar to what they were, uh, what the sort of um, commanding elite wear in Persia. They have these sort of masks. They're not too uncommon in Persia, but around these parts, they're not. They're pretty rarer to see. The sounds is very tall but very thin. The ropes seem to attach themselves to him. They hug themselves to him as he rests his hand very slightly upon Cleo's shoulder. Watching as you come over this crest of this um, bridge, he has his hand on his dagger. I'm going to sort of crouch. Wait to approach. I guess look look at y'all and sort of see if we can um, ag agree on yeah. how to approach the situation. Yarlene's going to slow her horse. Kind of rear it up. Um, oh, what's, what's going, going on? on? Let's um, have a go. There's no answer from across the bridge. As he extends a hand outwards and just holds an open palm, you can't see the face behind the mask, but it's angled towards all of you, it seems. What Mark do you want? Uh, is it like a gesture? Sorry, is it like a come here kind of thing? Or No, his hand stays static in the air. Like a take my hand? Or like mm -hmm. a... Like Not... I'm going to shoot something at you? <laughs> gesture? Is it, like, is it like this? Is it like that? It's, like... it's more like he's waiting for something. It's sort of like a take my hand, yeah. Okay. Um, maybe not be interpreted as that. Larkins, wait here. Uh, uh, just, just wait here. Um, and... Oh, Yelling will slowly approach on the horse. As you slowly approach, his dagger comes from his belt and he puts it no. in his hand, holding Cleo. Raise it back. But he holds this dagger in his hand now, no longer on Cleo's shoulder, uh, his hand. Rather, it's holding the dagger to her back and his other hand is still outstretched. I'm going to cast a message to Cleo um, and just say, hey, it's it's us. It's it's your family. You're gonna be all right. Hiya, Cleo. Um, I've, I've been here for some time. Um, and I'm not sure how this works, but it's not really how I. And it just cuts off because she doesn't understand the 25 minutes word limit to <laughs> message. <laughs> just. Uh, and we'll like glance over her shoulder real quick. Um, I don't know. Who that is, but he has um, one of our family. Just sort of a brief explanation to like the people at our back, and then step forward to get up in line with Yaling and see if, like, not any closer. What do you want? Now look to you, um, Yaling. The mask sort of angling to you. You can only assume what black holes remain in that mask are staring at you, but you can't see them. You can't read them. And he'll just look at you for a few seconds before his gaze returns to the party. And his hand turns from an open palm into a solid point. And he points straight at you, Larkin. Take a single step forward. Does, does the dagger seem to move? Does he make anything hostile? No. He's still pointing at you, Larkin, alone. Okay, then 
sort of just warily glancing at Yaling, just gonna like sort of touch her arm and then what do you want me to do? It's clear, it's clear. Just start walking, like it'll, it'll be all right, and just um, walk forward as long as he's not being hostile. Yeah, Yelling sure. But is... you don't have to walk. So sorry, go ahead, yelling. I was just gonna say she's gonna prepare a, a sleep spell. Just okay, to... sure. You pray with knocking an arrow. You're knocking an arrow, sure. Um, Very warily, like inching forward, just with as much confidence as she can muster. But it's it's a bravado for sure. Sure, absolutely. And as you get closer, you feel like. It's almost as though you don't have to walk at some point because the box is dragging you closer and closer to this person like a polarized magnet is dragging itself towards him. Mark, and as you get closer, finally, when you're within range of about 10 feet or so, you'll finally speak. You can control the box. And who are you? Hmm. I'm holding it back from like sort of going in his direction at this point. We met. I, 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 a hand on it. We met long ago. I gave you the box to take to Greece, and I promised I'd follow. The time's come to give me what I'm owed. Do I believe this motherfucker? Excuse me. Can't really insight check a gold mask, unfortunately. But I'll lay in a high DC insight check for his voice alone. Seven. Seven, yeah. Hard to tell what his true intentions are towards Cleo, to the party, to you. But instead of a point, his hand turns outwards again into an open palm. Give me the box. And your friend you come, will live. You come for it now. I, I promised uh, I would follow the box. Time was never part of the deal. I'm going to reach a hand towards Cleo. And she lets out a sharp cry of pain as the dagger in her back just plunges in, but doesn't penetrate too far, only to let out a cry. Stop! Stop. You, Do not. You'll have it, but her first. No. I know how much you care for this one. Yes, and you can clearly take this box from me if you want it, but... And I'm giving you the chance to give it to me first. Not until I have her, or her safety, and I don't exactly trust you. Do you blame me? Make a persuasion check. Ooh, uh, uh, uh. that's 18 on the die. Mm -hmm. um, plus four, 22. Hmm. You know I could take it if I wanted to. And I could cast all of you into the abyss. Such is my will. Let's Anything hope that? it doesn't come to that. And I'll shove Cleo forward so much that she almost stumbles forward and falls. But she manages uh -huh. to catch herself and she stables herself on you. Yeah, yeah, and I will catch her and sort of scoot her behind me immediately and just push her back towards yelling. Like, yeah, I'm just going to message uh, Larkin, like, run. Just run back. We've, we've not, got people, just run. Do not test my patience. Does he seem, do I get the sense that he, he heard that? Or he's just saying that? No, he didn't, he didn't, it's hard to tell him actually. But he's literally just waiting for the box. Noticing that you're not giving him, having him for the slowly part. reach back, sort of like, take a, like, like a, a single foot will step backwards of, as if like changing posture. Mm -hmm. And just go to open it, cast it and run simultaneously. Pretty much take it off, open it and like Okay. Dip. Interesting. All right, so um, ding. the moment that Cleo is, is by me, I'm just going to shove her like right behind me, out the way. All right, <laughs> okay. Well, let's put the battle map as it is for this before we say what we're doing, and let's roll initiative. <laughs> do, I, do I get now, the, the spell off, Harry, or no? Um, hang on, let me get to that after everyone's rolled initiative. Probably, sure. we'll soon see. Okay. Let me put him on the map. Sweats okay. nervously. Oh yeah, you totally fucking should be. I didn't think you'd probably fucking fight this guy, but here we go. <laughs> this is the that the cards we've been dealt. Oh boy. Fate <laughs> is fickle. 
That was a short campaign. <laughs> I like it. I'm only kidding. Like, you know, it's just funny. All right, okay. So gold mask figure has 11. I I clicked on my token, but it didn't register. Right, this. Tell, tell me what you got there. Uh, 14? Mm. Okay. 13? 13. Okay. Herodotus. A 17. 10 for uh, Antigonus. 6 okay. for Pruitt. 12. Uh, for hang Con. on. We're going a bit quick. 10 for Antigonus. Six for Pruitt. Does the click tokens and roll and roll twenty really not work? Or you have to use your character sheet for it to work. Yeah, I I haven't put my character sheet in roll twenty yet. Like all you have to do is do the dex thing, and then that's all that's needed for the int rolls. I Um, don't even have my character made. (laughs) Okay, sure. What did you get, Pruitt? Six. Six. And who am I missing now? Uh, Looks like Kara. Twelve. Twelve. Okay, cool. And Aquilus, if he's. Oh, uh, Aquilus probably got didn't get informed everyone was leaving at such a hurry. So we'll say that he's not arrived yet. Yeah. But okay, with that, um, I'll say the spell goes off for you, yeah, definitely, because it was a surprise action. So it's a surprise round pertaining just to Larkin. Uh, cause fear. So make a wisdom save for him. A wisdom right. save. Okay, let's see. Um, what did he get? Uh, 15. <laughs> The save's the 14. Ah, well, there you go. All right, so Herodotus, it's your turn. Let's put some battle music on as we fucking send this party into the abyss. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, here we go. Right, Herodotus, what do you want to do, man? As a top... Literally, it seems as though it's all been planned out. Like, the civilians are nowhere in sight, and this man stands alone. Oh, this car will be good. He pulls out like a knob of butter. And knowing what it does now... And he'll just send it towards him. Um, to put it at his feet. Okay. Uh, which is a 10 foot square in front of it, or on him and towards Larkin. So. Alright, okay. So it would be on him. If he stepped back five foot, it would be out of it. Sure. I think he makes one as soon as it. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Like, like... Right, so. Yeah, so it's uh... A d- uh, it'll be DC 14 decks. 10, 10 foot. Square? Ten foot square, yeah. Ten foot square. Like that? Yep. That's a fifteen foot on the That's long 15 side. Foot, yeah. No problems. Well, yeah, oh. we'll call it that for now. That's fine. But okay. okay. All right. And your turn, Herodotus. Um. Yes. Okay. Uh, Panda, it's your turn. Panda, who is of course yelling. That's He's me. Loud. Um. <laughs> I'm I. going to try and cast. Uh, I want to try and cast. Um, does he look like a strong guy? I imagine you know. Oh, no, he's quite, wi- quite wiry, actually. Tall but thin. I'm going to try and cast sleep on him then. Okay. So what's that? Five d eight. Yeah, I'm gonna spoil this for you and say that there's no possible way that can succeed. Rip. Yeah. <laughs> um, when I uh, after attempting it, uh, she's just gonna. Shout to Larkin, don't be an idiot, and just throw um, a bardic inspiration at her if I can. Good, sure great. <laughs> All right. So, Larkin. I'll, I'll use that. You're welcome. Your, it is your turn. But, Larkin, did you get the 1d100 off? Sorry. And I don't I, I, use, I, I used it for cause fear, um, but oh, right. I'm about I'm about to do that now because what okay. else the fuck can I she possibly do? Sure. Let's see what this gives us. I don't know. What's a 37, y'all? Uh, uh, uh. Disintegrate in a hundred foot radius. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. Um. You. Okay, gain advantage in any check you've seen someone try recently as you're driven to try to do better. I'm suddenly very envious, and, um. I will, I'll put that in there for chat for you, Harry, to interpret. Um, okay. Um. It's not very helpful in this current moment. You gain advantage on any check you've seen someone try recently as you're driven to do better than them. Okay, interesting. So you get advantage on... Um, well, he's not done anything yet, so the next thing he rolls on for makes him an advantage, you can mm-hmm. take advantage after that. Sure. So pretty much she's just opening the box as she's running to- back towards mm-hmm. um, her, her yeah. allies. It surrounds you more than it does anyone else, this box is magic. Yeah. And sort of green yeah. energy sort of 
penetrates your body and coalescing and swirling in its own right all right so um where's my turn order gone there it is uh so kara it's your turn i'm gonna help 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 (laughs) slightly (laughs) and um i'll go ahead and just take my staff and knock it on the ground bonus action shillelagh so my flowers kind of bloom okay and then just to have that ready, just in case he gets closer. But we're going to hope that doesn't happen. All right, sure thing. <laughs> and um, then with my action, I will then take the staff, do my little shaky shake, and cast my ice knife toward him. All right, absolutely. Let's see. What does he have to roll? Uh, dex. Um, yeah, dex save. All right. But I also have to make a ranged spell attack. Yeah. Dex, dex, dex. Uh, he got a 17, so he takes half damage from the ice knife. Um, but he takes his piercing damage as well, I think. Okay. Um, so that was a 16 to hit. Um, a 16 hits, yeah. All right. So. Piercing. And you said, did he, what did he get on his dex save? 16. 17, sorry, 17. Okay, so he saved, so half damage on that then. Uh huh. It's the total amount of damage. Oops. Okay, so eight, so four plus four, eight damage total. All right, not bad actually. Cool. Yeah, so as the ice knife sort of shoots out across the bridge, it sort of shatters across all sides of the bridge and it hits him and he just staggers backwards a little, but he stands up straight and brushes it off his robe. Which brings it around to his turn. And he'll look um, across the bridge now, step forward, and he's going to move 5, 10, 15. He, le- he leaves Greece. <laughs> he leaves Greece, yeah. Um, <laughs> 20, you here. So now he's standing on the top precipice of the bridge. You can see you all, um, and he's just looking from one of you to the other. And he says down to all of you, it never had to be this way. I only came for what I was owed, and I will take what I am owed. And he'll point his hand forward, and from that velvet glove begins to swirl a huge amount of purple coalesced swirling fog of energy until it starts to take on a more of a shape. And he's going to cast a magic missile at level nine. Ow. (laughs) Who's dead? I I cast shield as a reaction. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, it's not on you, and you can't transfer shields yet because you're not that far up. Okay, well, if it goes on to me, I'll, I'll cast it. Oh, totally. Um, okay, uh, two damage. Obviously, that's not rolling correctly. Um, <laughs> that's weird, isn't it? You took two damage from a ninth level magic. That's mis- perfect. That's, <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> accurate. Plus four. Great. All right, so it's, um, I think it's 12d12 plus, uh, 12d4 plus 12. I'm pretty sure is the correct mathematical formula for that. A minimum of 24 damage. Yeah. So there's 39 damage, Larkin. <laughs> as um, it's basically, he kind it's of like looks, the back. Yeah, looks at each of you, um, tries to angle it, as you can see, like he's putting his hand in certain ways. And then finally he pauses and then just lets out a, f- a final sort of flourish of his hand. And around all of you, the magic missiles sort of dodge around. Maybe they're going under an armpit or right past your head, but they're all sort of going sort of um, perpendicular patterns like sharp corners, so they're missing all of you and going only for Larkin. Larkin, you take 39 damage as these things all sort of come at you from different angles. These tw- <laughs> um, 12 piercing purple bolts just stick into your body from every side. Yeah, so as she's like pushing Cleo forward and getting behind her allies and like these are just gunning for her back. She's she's loosening the strap of the um the box is attached to and essentially like dis- discarding it as best as she can. Um and a a look to to Cleo and Ya Link um I guess like right before impact of just um be careful. Be heroes, and then just. Mm-hmm. 
He drops his hand immediately, looks to all of you, saying, The same fate can be afforded to each of you. Return me to my what I am owed, and I'll leave you here. Uh, I step forward on my turn, my hands in the air. We have no fight. We serve men. I hope you do the same. How far down is the water? <laughs> uh, it's about 120 feet. Oh, Jesus. That's insta death as well. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll, I will. Um, hmm. I will. <laughs> I'm simply going to book it back. <laughs> Bit of a coward uh, after seeing what happened here. But I do try to scoop. I uh, leave the box, but I'll try to scoop up Larkin's body and um, leave the box there as I move back. All right. Sure thing. So taking your turn to move back as far as you can with Larkin's body. He won't stop that. Harry, uh -huh. as, as she was discarding the box, could she have discarded it over the edge? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. If you wanted to make your last action to throw um, the box over the side of the bridge. I want to throw it right towards the, the, the bridge's ass. Like, just <laughs> yeah, <all right. laughs> throw it the bridge's ass. And his Lands face right just, between the crack. <laughs> his, face, his face just follows it as it falls. And he looks down and looks back to the rest of the party and says, You can go now. But Carl, it's your turn as Antigonus has ran away. Sorry, Carl. It's like, ah, uh, <laughs> I don't like this. Who's guys it? Um, Prey uh, is going to ask uh, the figure, what is your name? My name is of no consequence to you. My name is Prey with Romain. I'm tired of losing friends. And I'll fire. All right, sure thing. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead and fire. Yep. <laughs> That's a 17 to hit. 17 will hit him, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Heart. Uh. <laughs> Oh, max damage. Well, that's okay, something. That's good. Nine damage. <laughs> Nine damage. Okay. Uh, uh huh. All right. That's fine. Um, is that in your turn? Yep. All right. Um, Herodotus, it's your turn. As uh, Freya just lets out, a, um, is it an arrow? Yeah, or a bolt? Yep. And, an and it's an arrow. This, so it sticks in. He's got this pearlescent white cloak on that's seen no stain, but this sticks in his shoulder. And sure enough, it tells you something about him in that this red stain begins to form under where this arrow is sunk into his white robe. Mm -hmm. And he just looks at it and looks back at you. And then he raises his glove again, but it's not his turn. It's Rodotus' turn. Well, okay. Seeing him raise his glove. It's the end I'll of your turn, actually. Cover. So he's going to actually okay. Okay, legendary, fair enough, fair enough. legendary action to cast a cantrip on you. Okay. Yeah. That's fair enough. He's got a lot of <laughs> legendary actions I have to burn through. So he's going to do yep. a firebolt on you. Um, okay. for 18. Does 18 hit? Uh, yeah, that hits. All right. So he fires balls you for 22 damage. But it doesn't make sense. Uh, Prey's right down. Oh, right. Okay, of course. So he's quite high level. So yeah. yeah. Uh, yep, he's down. You're down. Okay. So yep. yeah, he fires his fireball out for 22 damage. As soon as you, um, let this arrow loose, he notices it going through the air. You can see his eyes behind this sort of golden mask following it until he follows it into his body. But his hand that's already extended just lets out a single click and a fire bolt just pours out sort of gathering shape as it moves through the air and just burns into your center. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah Preywick gets hit. He's he's kind of on the wall of the bridge right now and he tumbles, not off the side, but towards, I mean, if I can move my character five feet, I would just say he kind of falls back behind there. All right, sure thing. And just there's the there's sizzling coming from his uh, shoulder chest. Mm -hmm. Right, fair enough. Is that any turn? Oh, I mean, yeah, it's, yep. it's a legendary oh, action. Yeah. <laughs> so it's Herodotus, it's your turn. Oh, dear. I'm going to cast major armor on myself. And uh -huh. I'm going to move over to Pruitt mm -hmm. and check his pulse. I have a pulse. <laughs> 
You just have a pulse. Okay. For now. Uh, is he, are, are you unconscious or? I'm you unconscious. Can, yeah. yeah I'm. Down. I'm zero. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll try. Well, I can't do anything else. I've, I've cast major armor, so. Right. I'll move over ah, to him right, yeah. and kneel down beside him. A sure thing. All right. Is that any turn? Yeah. All right, um, Yarling, it's your turn. Having seen um, the person you've spent so long with just immediately get pierced from all angles with these sort of mathematically designed precision, um, what pierced her has just disappeared and the holes are left open as though there's se several daggers in her that have just disappeared and blood pours down from every conceivable area as she lies prone on the ground. She just, like, shrieks at this man, sees what happens to Pruitt, and just, just I would I would do it, but I can't. It's late. But she's just yeah. screaming, tears streaming down her face. Um, she starts to Cleo to just get back, just like literally almost shoving her away. Um, and she's going to cast Thunder Wave um, at the man, um, and then promptly go. I'm going to hide behind this part of the wall, so she's out of the way. <laughs> Brace yep, for impact. Uh, so it's a con save. Okay. Um, he's not got great con, I don't think. Good. 14. Damn it! It's 13 <laughs> con save. That's so oh, I fight one every time. Uh -huh. But she's, right. she's now hidden under this, sure. this Huge corner. Sure. Shocking sound wave blasts out across all of Chalkis, drawing people's attention to this area of the town. <laughs> He doesn't seem faced by it. He just stands in the sh in the face of the shockwave. His robes go like insane, fluttering around him as though a heavy wind had hit him. But he himself stands tall and proud against it. Um, Larkin is, I think, dead. So, <laughs> like, he has a, little, maybe a couple of coughs, maybe. Like, yeah, this is sure. very, very pretty much dead. All right, Kara, it's your turn. What would you like to do? Quick question about Thunder Wave. Um, I, it's my understanding that that's actually a 15 foot cube. So would that have affected me and Prewit as well? And her uh, other you casted it on him. So yeah, he's... you can cast it in like a range. Yeah, it's cast on him. So he's not within 15 feet it's... of either of you. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm just gonna look toward the big bad guy. <laughs> say, no. say, we have no fight with you. Just let let this go, and I'm gonna move over toward Prewit. Uh -huh. and I'm gonna bend down and reach down and close my eyes. My tattoos will kind of turn into those vines again, and they'll come out my fingers and kind of onto Prewit and slightly kind of into him, and little flowers bloom, and I'm gonna cast Cure Wounds on him. Sure thing, absolutely. Hmm. So that's seven, ten hit points. Okay, so thank you. Return to him. She brings it round to this guy's turn, whose hand is still extended out now. But hearing your um, words, Kara, he'll lower his hand and reply, I meant no harm to any of you this day. I am sorry for how this has turned out. And he'll move forward 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And um, he'll reach into his robe, um, deep inside what seems to be like several layers. And he pulls out a single red vial and he hands it down to you, Kara. That will see him through. Thank you. What about Larkin? Worry not, young one. I will see to this Larkin of which you speak. Bring her back. Hmm. You can hear his sort of smile from behind his mask. You can almost see his eyes light up a little, which you now see to be sort of a golden hazel through these sort of tiny holes in his golden mask. I'll try my best. And with that, he'll move over to Larkin, which is using more than moves, moves on this turn, but, you know, um, <laughs> narrative purposes. Um, 
he'll look down to Lark and and um, he'll look back to you, um, Yarling, and he'll say, I am afraid the only tool I could have done this feat of magic with is somewhere at the bottom of the ocean. Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit check. <laughs> <laughs> Blood spit at him in like a moment of lifeless lifeless. He puts his hand on you and um, he just shakes his head saying you know You better go swimming then. By the time I'm back, it will be too late. Then you have just given yourself a death sentence. I never came here with the intention of harming any of you. But you did. You oh. came with a young girl as hostage. You stuck a dagger into her back and thought that we were just going to be fine. You killed my sister. I gave her ample chance to return. No, you did not. Episode. You were hostile from the start. Hmm. I sense that one day you and I will meet again. And it will be your last. In that case, I wish you luck. But for now, I've got some fishing to do. And he'll close his red glove and he's going to cast a spell as he closes it to himself and pats it on his chest. He's going to cast Time Stop which gives him five actions over the next action you guys have. So, Can I do an arcana before he finishes the spell? If you want to, you want to check what he's doing. I mean, actually, no, because the spell doesn't do anything. Oh, okay. he's, basically what happens is he just disappears. Like He's just gone from existence. No flashy moves, no big sparks of disappearing. His corporeal form just, it's gone. And like that, whoever this man was is gone. And Cleo is left with you sort of tugging on Yarling's sort of coattails while looking down at the form of um, Larkin. But that's where we'll end this time, this, uh, today's session. We'll get back to it. <laughs> Jeez. Not really fair of me the DM, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this is my um, eagerness to play Call of Cthulhu coming out. It's like nearly 3 a.m., <laughs> but I want to scream so bad. <laughs> oh, laughing! It's gone. Oh, I didn't get back to my turn. I had so many things. <laughs> yeah, never expected at all for you to fight this guy at all, right? So... <laughs> hey, man. Yeah, you got to try it. You got to try it. But you know, when he starts casting level like twenty-two damage fire bolts, yeah, maybe no. you pack it in. <laughs> That's a cantrip, for God's sakes. <laughs> well, I'm I'm just glad he had a legendary action cantrip as mm -hmm. opposed to a turn in which he would have cast a full spell. That's <laughs> so, true, that's true. He's got plenty it. more tricks up his sleeve, so. Yeah. <laughs> that was cool. But yeah, thanks so much, everybody, for showing up to watch today. Um, yeah, unfortunately, seems like we've lost a valued character in Larkin. But who knows what the future holds for Larkin? Who knows? You never know. Land live in a world of fates and Tartarus and Elysium and all sorts of strange afterlife opportunities. So we'll soon yeah. see. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Um, and we'll see you for tomorrow for Hemlora. <coughs> all right. See you later, everybody. See you later. Bye. 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 See you around.